Okay. Well, I am going to call the September 1st, 2021 Washtenaw County Board of Commissioners Ways and Means Committee meeting to order at 631. Robert, can you call the roll, please? Commissioner Beeman. Present, attending remotely from the village of Manchester, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Jefferson. Present, attending from the township of Ypsilanti, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Labar. Present. Attending from the city of Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Machieski. President attending remotely from Dexter Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Morgan. President attending remotely from the city of Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Scott. President attending remotely from the city of Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County, in the great state of Michigan. Commissioner Schink. President attending remotely from Northfield Township, Michigan. Commissioner Sanders. President attending remotely from Pittsfield Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Hodge. President attending remotely from Ypsilanti Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Thank you, we have a quorum. Thank you. All right, we're gonna move into citizen participation. Uh, so a couple of notes and something that's new today, uh, tran the live transcript is active. So if you'd like subtitles to this meeting, you just have to click on the bottom of the screen to activate that. Uh, you'll see a button that says live transcript. So you'll click on that. Uh, if you are joining us via Zoom, you will be able to raise your hand by clicking the raise your hand icon. Uh, that'll let me know that you would like to give public comment. If you are joining us by phone, you will hit star nine to raise your hand. And then when I call on you, you will hit star six to unmute yourself. Uh, here are ways and means you get three minutes to speak. Uh, it's part of our board rule. So if you start going over three minutes, I got to unfortunately cut you off. I um, don't want to do it usually, but if that you have to cut you off and then move on to the next person. So again, it's three minutes to speak here at ways and means. Uh, and then you get to raise your hand by clicking that raise hand icon, star nine. If you're joining us, it's to unmute. And again, if you'd like to have the live transcript, just click on that at the bottom of the screen. We have a lot of people attending the meeting today, so I'm going to jump right into public comment. Uh, I'm going to start with Corey Mason. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is Corey Mason. I'm the president of AFSCME Local 2733, Washtenaw County Employees. I'm here tonight to speak uh, briefly on two subjects um, that are a continuation from uh, last month's meeting. Uh, the first is with regards to juvenile detention. Uh, I wanted to report that we have had a number of meetings with management and we're continuing to make progress uh, in our concerns in that area. Uh, in particular, um, we had five new hires start in juvenile detention this week. Uh, I believe one regular and four relief workers and that uh, helps address one of our most significant concerns about short staffing. So I wanna thank the department for being able to make um, uh, that happen. Uh, the second thing is uh, on your agenda tonight, you have uh, CMH's uh, budget proposal. Um, as you all know, and several of you have talked to me today about in fact already, um, there is the vocational uh, program uh, uh, budget shifting uh, as part of that. Um, we continue to be in uh, heavy negotiations with management um, on resolving this issue. Um, I believe we are close to a resolution uh, until such time as we do have a, a signed um, uh, document though, we do continue to oppose the, the loss of jobs for our members. And um, I think basically my ask here is that uh, you provide us with sufficient time to finish our negotiations before final passage uh, of this budget. Thank you. Thank you. I uh, also want to remind people in case this or let you know for the first time, if this is your first time at a meeting like this, uh, the commissioners will not respond to you until after all the public comment has been made. Uh, it's not that people don't care or that they're being rude. That's just the way that the agenda is structured. So uh, if you make a comment, please be patient and wait for all the other comments to be completed to be able to hear back from the commissioners uh, as we give a response. Uh, also, please do state your name. Uh, and I know that everybody has their first and last name as part of their Zoom name, so I can't read everybody's first and last name, but when you begin speaking, please list your name for the record. Okay, next up, I have the Interfaith Council for Peace and Justice. You're definitely going to have to say your name. 
Hello, everyone. My name is Desiree Simmons. I'm calling in from Ypsilanti. Uh, I'm here talking about the ARP funds that are going to be that look like they're starting to be appropriated. Uh, and I come here with the spirit of abundance. Um, a hundred million dollars is not all that is needed to deal with our needs, but it is enough to make deep, invisible impact to begin addressing the historic and institutional disparities within Washtenaw County. Racial and economic justice means sometimes having to say no to resources for the more privileged in order to close the gaps. It means resourcing what is needed most first. We can't do what is typical with everyone biting off small pieces for their own projects before getting to the big things. And then saying, when the community is asking for a big investment to say, oh, we don't have the money. Well, this is the moment when we do have the money and it is intended to support communities hardest hit by COVID-19 and address the disparities that the pandemic highlighted so clearly. The county must remedy the poor criteria that made it so the city of Ypsilanti only received about $2 million when about two thirds of the city is a qualified census tract and it holds a large proportion of the county's population as mid to low wage owners who have been hardest hit and the city has been trying to help support keeping people housed. We must not disappear the money into shovel ready projects that no one is asking for or that has been on the decision makers minds. Let's reject false solutions like a one time payment into a savings account for college which does nothing to address the funding per child disparity from K to 12 in our county and focus on moving ourselves out of being in the bottom 8% of counties for economic mobility. I don't know what you will be able to discern from the survey given the format, but I did not feel personally that the option to share ideas was genuine given that it required basically like a full grant proposal in order for it to be considered or researched by the group. This raises another question for me, which is what is the timeline for allocating and spending these funds? How long will these ideas even be vetted? What other opportunities to really hear from the community about what is needed will there be? Because there are more things that people probably would think of than what was included on this survey. Abundance means that we all get what we need first. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Adam. Hey, everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Adam Cecil. I'm a resident of Pittsfield Township, and I am um, here tonight to speak uh, about two different points. Uh, the first point is in regards to um, uh, support for premium pay for social service workers. I just want to take a moment and thank um, the various commissioners for engaging with us on the various levels. We've had productive individual meetings with Commissioner Labar, Commissioner Sanders. I think all nine commissioners have. Uh, we had listening sessions with, with many others, and I think everyone has got it in their email. Uh, the proposal that we drafted, we're a group of workers that have upheld the community safety net throughout the pandemic. So the people that work at the homeless shelters, the domestic violence shelters, um, substance abuse, uh, certain hospital services, uh, therapists, uh, case managers, Ipsy Meals on Wheels, a lot of the low paid work that the county relies on to have a, a, a good safety net. And, and so we're, I, I'm here today to encourage that that proposal be moved to the next step. Uh, my understanding is it's not on the agenda today. Um, but there is opportunity for it to be on the agenda uh, for future meetings and, and want to express my support and say we are here to help and collaborate with that. Um, we see the county as the only level of government for us to really engage on this issue. Um, and otherwise, I don't see it. It's not happening anywhere else. And a lot of us are putting faith in what we feel to be the progressive Democrat leadership we have in Washtenaw County um, in terms of, of pursuing something like this. And really, uh, many of us 
feel invisible. And, and, and many in our industry were doing face-to-face -face work in the pandemic for as low as $13 an hour, um, trying to keep people alive off the streets, uh, not committing suicide. I mean, you name it. Uh, so I would I would ask that uh, the commissioners, if the commissioners during the, the comment period can speak to what they see as the next steps for that proposal, if we can have it on the agenda next time. Um, I want to emphasize we're here to work uh, with everyone. And I want to uh, also say that uh, I'm also here to express opposition to the cuts to the CMH vocational um, program. Uh, last but not least, we did. Uh, we were going to have a lot of people come out tonight, but recognizing we were not on the agenda, uh, some people took the night off. So I just didn't want lower numbers to count against us today. Uh, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. And you were right at time. So that's always really helpful. Uh, next up, we have Trisha Duckworth. Good evening, commissioners. Um, thank you for the space to speak. Um, I wanted to come to you and talk about a couple things just very briefly. Um, we understand that the prosecutor's office is up for um, the conviction integrity and expungement unit um, being considered to be fully funded or permanently funded. And just coming today to make a plea on behalf of justice, um, personally myself been working um, with cases of wrongful conviction since 2014 right here in Washtenaw County, um, where these individuals are still um, waiting to come home. And then seven years later, um, just this earlier this year, um, having a mother reach out to me um, because her son was wrongly incarcerated. Um, her, his phone was pinged in a different area than the murder happened in. So to know that your child is innocent, and there are so many more stories. And so we're just asking for the consideration to fully fund um, the integrity and expungement unit because it is definitely needed. Also too thinking about what having, having that office in place um, to even save on the front end, if someone comes in with a claim of innocence where we don't have to spend 40, $50,000 on a trial and then we still don't have justice because we have got the wrong person. Um, next, I just wanna uh, talk to you a little bit about the funding that is coming in and just um, making a plea to you all to also consider grassroots organizations who are forming and working directly closely with those that are impacted. Um, there are a lot of groups, um, especially in Ypsilanti right now with what's going on. You have the Supreme Felons, um, you have men and women working for change. There are a lot of grassroots organizations that could really use that funding, which would really, really impact um, the neighborhood and the community. So just asking that you all remember sometimes when giving money to larger systems, people kind of slip through the cracks. So when you have people from the community that form and they're able to get right in with those that, that trust them, um, you sometimes start to see more change. And a lot of times it's hard because if these agencies don't have the funding that they need, they can't operate fully and do the work effectively like they would like to do. So we're just asking that we remember grassroots organizations when we start to allocate funding. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Next up, we have Lindsay Fernandez. Hi, everyone. Um, I am a social worker uh, working in Washtenaw County. I'm a resident of Washtenaw County. Um, I was here last month, um, but I wanted to just briefly touch on uh, the similar points as Adam. Um, I'm here to advocate against cuts to CMH. Um, I wanted to describe just a little bit about uh, how one might qualify for CMH services. Um, generally, an individual must have Medicaid and must have an income so low that they qualify for Medicaid. And so these are generally individuals that have very, very little resources. Um, Additionally, the CMH services are for people who are very, very ill um, and, and mentally ill. Um, people that are court ordered to treatment are followed by CMH. Um, CMH also provides services for people that have developmental disabilities or intellectual disabilities. Um, these are, again, the, some of the poorest, most vulnerable, neglected individuals in our community. And CMH 
supports them all. And um, we would have a lot more people homeless. We would have a lot more people uh, without care um, if, if any programs at CMH could cut. So I just wanted to, to touch on that briefly um, and kind of emphasize who would be impacted by those cuts, right? Um, and the other thing is that uh, we also wanna advocate for um, social service worker um, uh, pay. And um, I wanted to, and I've spoken with some of you already, um, hi, Commissioner Sanders and hi, Commissioner um, Jefferson. Um, but uh, I had shared previously my story of, um, I worked 40 hours a week in COVID units and ICUs in a hospital without any health insurance. Um, I was considered contingent. And so um, even though I worked full-time hours, it was not eligible for any benefits. And so I worked um, from October uh, 2020 to about January 2021 um, in actively having to get tested all the time um, without any without any insurance. And so um, people that were working on front lines, um, I think, could use, uh, you know, um, a little bit of a break after the amount of work and the, the type of work that we've been looking at. So thank you very much for hearing me speak. Thank you for coming to speak. Uh, next up we have Gary Munts. Gary, I uh, just have to unmute yourself. All right, we'll come back to you, Gary. Uh, I'm going to do. Oh, I'm ready. I'm sorry. I'm back. Oh, okay, go ahead, Gary. Thank go you. Ahead. Thank you much. Uh, thank you for your patience. Uh, first of all, let me thank the commissioners for this opportunity to speak this evening. Uh, my name is Gary Munts, and I would like to speak to you about the broadband crisis in Washtenaw County and our once-in-a-lifetime inflection point of being able to answer the call to solve this broadband crisis. It is a an issue that affects the health, well-being, and safety of every resident in Washtenaw County. And now is the time for us to act, and I feel in a decisive matter to make a statement about this. Washtenaw County has the opportunity to be a leader in setting an example of how to respond to its people in this time of need for broadband services. I'd like to thank the Broadband Task Force for the excellent work they've done, all of the research describing the problem, and giving us a path forward that makes sense and makes good use of the dollars that we're talking about today. Additionally, I'd like to speak on behalf of the Washtenaw County Commission on Aging. I'd just like to point out a few facts about aging and access to digital resources in Washtenaw County. Uh, recently, we all understand the COVID problem that we suffered in the United States. 80% of COVID deaths in the United States were Americans over 60 years of, old, 60 years of age. Approximately 40% of them were unable to access needed online resources for home healthcare during the, during the epidemic. Poor broadband access not only uh, is a detriment to essential public health information and social services, but it can also lead to the risk of social isolation. For seniors, we know that social isolation is a critical factor in health and can potentially lead to great risk, including death. I believe it's imperative that the county leverage this opportunity for a broadband network to access, improve education, socioeconomic equality, telemedicine, and public safety. I appreciate your consideration on this matter, and I'm looking forward to a decisive action by the commissioners. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. All right, we got Marvin Cotton next. Okay. My name is Marvin Cotton and I am a resident of Michigan. I spent 19 years, seven months and 12 days in prison for a crime I didn't commit. I was released due to the efforts of Conviction Integrity Unit out of Wayne County. Um, since I've been released um, October 1st, 2020, I advocate on behalf of um, those that are wrongfully convicted and have been wrongfully convicted and those that are still in prison due to a wrongful conviction um, to try to get other counties to really fund and take serious conviction integrity units. Because I know um, how it feels to sit in, in prison for a crime that you didn't commit and um, the court system isn't um, addressing innocence claims. 
Um, they're more focused on procedures. So a convicted to really reinvestigate, really look at the case um, 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 in a different, more important, uh, I have to put a face to the numbers. I know oftentimes, you know, when we're, uh, when we have the huge responsibility of making um, um, decisions based on money, sometimes, you know, that's a responsibility and, 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 and I'm really humbled um, in your presence because I understand how important that is, but please don't put a dollar uh, amount, and I don't mean to offend anyone, on um, what it takes in order to really fund something like that. Uh, Conviction Integrity Unit is so important. We live in a country where we say we want a more perfect union. Um, the way that we get a more perfect union is to really correct um, the mistakes and the systems in which makes this union a country. Um, we all live here. We want it to be better and better. Uh, funding the Conviction Integrity Unit in Washtenaw County is so important. Michigan is leading when it comes to justice reform. And the reason that Michigan is leading when it comes to justice reform is because you have um, uh, places like Wayne County with its Conviction Integrity Unit that's showing the rest of the country, this is how, um, this is how a country treats its citizens. This is how people treat people. And I believe it is so necessary for Washington County to really join this fight um, in a very robust, a robust way. Uh, we're in Missouri right now. I'm coming to you from Missouri right now, where in Missouri is maybe one of the worst places in the country when it comes to justice reform. There are innocent men here where the prosecutors are saying these men are innocent. They don't have conviction integrity units. And they're saying these men are innocent and you have people in the government fighting the local prosecutors um, and, and, and they refuse to let these men out. So I advocate on behalf of the innocent um, that's incarcerated and, and I support prosecutor offices all around the country that have taken the step. Um, Extra time, Marvin, so can you wrap up this, make this the last sentence or wrap this sentence up? Um, Please fund the Conviction Integrity Unit in Washtenaw County, and I'm humbled in your presence. Thank you. Thank you, Marvin. Next up, we got Danny Hoover. Um, hi there. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay. Thank you so much. I'm Danny Hoover, and I'm speaking as a citizen. I'm not representing Washtenaw County. I am a support coordinator working in CMH since 2013. And in this role, I support adults living with intellectual or developmental disabilities and or mental illness. And I'm also the AFSCME Local 2733 Vice President, a steward, and a delegate to the Huron Valley Area Labor Federation. Uh, firstly, um, I second what President Mason spoke on earlier about um, the, the JD and the CMH stuff. And um, as far as the CMH items, I just want to add that um, one of the ethical principles in the NASW Code of Ethics is service. And it basically says social workers' primary goal is to help people in need and to address social problems. And I don't think it's necessary to be a social worker to practice this. And I would just like to suggest that as you meet with each other and external parties, that you think about um, this value and try to practice that in your decision making. Thank you. Thank you, Danny. Next up, we've got Jay Kingsley. So I'm going to need you to state your name since uh, I think that's probably the J stands for something. You're going to have to unmute. I'm John Kingsley. I'm supervisor of Webster Township. And I have two issues that I'd like to uh, bring to your attention tonight, not bring to your attention, remind you of tonight. And those are uh, broadband, uh, the western part of Washtenaw County and uh, parts of Ypsilanti uh, have uh, and areas that are not uh, served by uh, broadband. Uh, they may or may not be served by cell phone. And therefore, uh, we need to emphasize uh, that broadband is a priority for our county. It was recognized by 
your body about 15 years ago in the uh, 2020 communications uh, partnership uh, that was unable to get funded. Now we have funding. The other thing I'd like to uh, speak to you tonight about is uh, the uh, Washtenaw County uh, Water Resource Commission uh, initiative to replace uh, under road culverts and to improve drainage on our county roads to uh, make the roads uh, last longer and uh, alleviate some flooding and so on. Uh, those are, are my two uh, major issues. And I see those as being the two major issues uh, out in the rural parts of uh, Washtenaw County, even though we're only seven miles or whatever from Ann Arbor, uh, we do not get the number or quality of services that the rest of the county gets. Uh, the broadband initiative is a once in a lifetime opportunity. Um, please take the bull by the horns and uh, fund that initiative. Thank you very much and you have a good evening. Thank you, and you too. Mark Fuller. Good evening, my name is Barbara Fuller. I live in Sharon Township, which is almost to the Jackson County line out near the village of Manchester. I'm here tonight as the chair of the broadband task force and a resident of a township that has no broadband coverage at this point in time. I'd like to thank the commissioners for their five years of commitment to looking at this problem and the broadband task force has brought forth a proposal to solve this problem and achieve 100% countywide broadband coverage. Uh, the agenda item in your packet and that agenda packet was a monster, I must say. Uh, it's agenda item 4.F.1. The background memo starts on page 406. The resolution is on page 417. There are 14 township resolutions supporting the funding of the gap filling initiative that's been brought forth by the broadband task force. There are 21 pages there from page 422 forward. And then beginning on page 444, there are 60 pages of resident comments and testimonials regarding their daily circumstances of trying to function in this day and age without access to broadband. Uh, we've spoken to you before about this issue. The background memo is very comprehensive on this point. And if you go to washtenaw.org slash broadband, there is enough information there to keep anybody busy for many hours. I strongly recommend uh, that you support this um, initiative, this proposal tonight. And I'm hopeful to see it on the September 15th agenda of the entire Board of Commissioners. I've really appreciated the support and the comments from all of the commissioners, the hard work of particularly Commissioner Maciejewski and Commissioner Beeman in terms of conducting town hall meetings during this time of public engagement on the American Rescue Plan funding money. Um, in closing, I just have a a little request, could the pages on these packets be numbered, please? <laughs> um, it would make referencing items much, much easier in conversations. Um, and having prepared a few of these packets myself in the past in other places, it's real easy uh, to plunk a page number at the bottom of that page. So please support this initiative. I'm grateful for all the work. This is quite the resolution that's come together for allocating part of the ARPA funding that the county will receive. And I'm grateful for the support and look forward to having this put into action, particularly on the 15th of this month. Thank you. Perfectly timed, right on that three minute mark. Uh, thank you, Barb. Next up we have Trina Shanks. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, everybody. Good evening. This is Trina Shanks. I'm the Harold R. Johnson Collegiate Professor and Director of Community Engagement at the University of Michigan School of Social Work. I'd like to speak in favor of your ARP plan funding for child savings accounts. 
I've been part of three child savings account programs in Michigan, one from 2004 to 2009 in Oakland Livingston County, which was a pilot with Head Start families. Also helped advise Lansing as they launched their child savings account program in their school district. I've also sat on an advisory board for community-based programs in Detroit in an organization called Alternatives for Girls. And um, just wanted to say that these programs are really important. They help parents start saving for and thinking about college early. They help promote more concrete conversation between parents and children around why school is important and um, making concrete plans for how they're gonna to go to college, where they're gonna to go to college, how they're gonna pay for it. And there's evidence from experimental studies that show that children from low income and vulnerable families are more likely to enroll in and complete college and post-secondary education if they have child savings accounts. So I'm really excited to see this as something that you're considering and just want to encourage you to continue to proceed and to launch this in the county. That's all. Thank you, Trina. Next up, we have Jeffrey Arbogast. Hi, everybody. Um, I am speaking as a citizen of Northfield Township and not as an employee. I am a member of the Information Technology Department, as well as the 2733 Unit A Chair. I come in support of our vocational members and of the program. I think it's an integral part to the community, especially for people with um, developmental disabilities. And I understand that there are reasons that they are doing these cuts, but I still do not agree with them. Um, I appreciate your time. And I did give a lengthier explanation last time. Um, thank you very much and have a good day. Thank you, you too. Uh, next up we have Matthew Dargay. Good evening, everyone. My name is Matt Dargay and I've worked for Dawn Farm as an addiction counselor for the past few years. I've had the pleasure of meeting a few commissioners already who have listened as I and others detailed the sorry state of pay among social service workers in Washtenaw County. They know, for instance, that after Dawn Farm's hazard pay came into effect in April of 2020, I started making $13.50 an hour. I'm thankful that these commissioners have engaged with Social Service Workers United on our proposal, which would allot some of the county's American Rescue Plan funds towards premium pay for local social service workers. And before the committee concludes tonight, there is one more point I'd like to make. If premium pay were to be made available to the county's social service workers, this money would get spent almost immediately on essential goods and services that my fellow social service workers have been putting off purchasing. I know this because my coworkers at Dawn Farm have told me as much. One regularly donates blood plasma in order to have cash for groceries. I know of others who have had to put off car repairs and even medical care because they didn't have the money to cover them. Almost everyone I've worked with throughout the pandemic has had stories like these. So I see the proposal as even more than an investment in a social safety net worn thin by the pandemic. I also see it as a source of investment into Washtenaw County's economy. Indeed, I strongly believe that the latter cannot fully occur without the former. This, among other reasons, is why I ask the Board of Commissioners to add our proposal to their agenda and approve it during their leadership meeting on Monday. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Next up, we have a phone number ending in 8376. So you will have to hit star six to unmute yourself. Didn't even need Commissioner Beeman to tell me that this time. Hello, can you hear me? There's a little bit of an echo. We may want to wait to the echo. Okay, I think we're good. Please fix this name, please. I'm sorry, is there an echo? Yeah, there's an echo. I, I don't know, maybe if you're watching the, the stream somewhere else, I hear a little bit of county stuff in the background. I don't know if that's causing the echo. Go ahead, go ahead and try now. Okay, I, I'm... Uh, 
taking the webinar off. I'm Audrey Anderson. I uh, am a resident in Pittsville Township. Therefore, I live in Washtenaw County. Um, forgive me. I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone here. I don't usually do this. And um, I have competing demands right now. The first item is I want to speak on behalf of the Conviction Integrity Unit funding. As a taxpayer, I feel that we're paying for those who are being housed, imprisoned for wrongful conviction. And it makes sense to me to have a conviction integrity unit to manage these cases for those who are wrongfully convicted. And I feel why should my tax dollars go towards housing those who are wrongfully convicted and really should be out and, um, living uh, their lives uh, and being free from so from that kind of conviction. And as you know, there are all kinds of ramifications on a person's life who has been wrongfully convicted and can be out in the community and the society contributing. Um, secondly, I feel it increases mass incarceration, and I don't have to go into a long talk about that. You know what's going on there. And third, uh, the benefit cost factor to me uh, gravitates towards m more of having the benefit of a conviction integrity unit in Washtenaw County um, based on the cost factor and the humanity factor. The second thing uh, is the funding of the charter school. I have a grandson that attends the charter school, and I like to see idea of having a option of a charter school. So you're at your time now, so please wrap up the current thoughts you're on. Okay, because I find that it benefits him more uh, to go to the charter school that he goes to. So I'm asking that you favor the Washtenaw County Charter School financing. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we have Guy Conti. Good evening. Uh, just as a, a, an aside, uh, the county calendar said the meeting started at 645, and when I logged in at 643, the meeting had already started. So if, if in fact, it starts earlier, perhaps we ought to look at the county calendar and make sure everything is uh, coordinated. Um, so John Doe has been at St. Joseph Mercy Hospital for about three weeks. He is schizophrenic and suffers from auditory hallucinations. He has severe anxiety disorder, uh, and the combination of auditory hallucinations and severe anxiety disorder precludes the use of group therapy as an effective treatment because he often imagines people say things to him that they actually do not say, and this has resulted in violent outbursts by John. He requires intensive, frequent individual therapy so he can process the traumas that impact him. This precludes the outpatient treatment model of our, of our county community mental health. He also suffers from severe PTSD, having amongst other traumas in his life, found his dorm uh, friend at EMU dead from suicide. John has been severely addicted to drugs such as heroin, meth, LSD, ecstasy, and marijuana as self-medication because of the psychiatric symptoms for the last 15 years, during which time John has visited the ER almost four dozen times and been admitted to the inpatient psych unit almost three dozen times. Of course, sometimes he is not admitted. 
Most recently in May, when he tried to jump off an interstate overpass and the social workers at the hospital decided he wasn't serious enough about his suicidal ideations. John is a Medicaid patient and a primary consumer with Washtenaw Community Mental Health. He has attempted drug rehabilitation programs, including Don Farm, about a dozen times. He has never succeeded at these programs in large part because he gets kicked out of them for having severe psychiatric symptoms. He has never been able to sustain his own housing despite trying several times. John's treatment over the last 15 years, which consists of brief, brief inpatient hospitalizations at a local hospital, followed by no appropriate inpatient long-term mental health treatment, failed drug rehab stints because of his mental illness symptoms, and a decompensation that happens rapidly after being generally unsafely discharged by the local hospital is woefully inadequate. Today, John's psychiatrist at St. Joseph Mercy informed his guardian that he will be discharged on Tuesday, September 7th, whether or not there is a safe, adequate placement for him at that time. The psychiatrist stated that he believed the discharge to a local hotel or to the Delana Center, which currently has no available beds, would be a safe, adequate discharge. John's guardian has called every nonprofit long-term inpatient dual diagnosis program in the United States and has found two that would be adequate for his treatment, Hopewell in Hopewell, Ohio, and Rose Hill Center in Holly, Michigan. Washtenaw Community Mental Health is one of only three county mental health departments that does not contract with Rose Hill. And of we're course- We're time, so please finish the thought for Ron, and we have to move on. That's fine, thank you. So this is an unacceptable situation. People like this, seriously, uh, mentally ill and drug addicted, dual diagnosis people, do not have adequate treatment with our community mental health. I would hope that you guys, uh, the commission would look into this in a fact-finding manner and ask the two reps from the commission to the Washington County Community Mental Health Board uh, to try and alleviate these problems for these people who fall through the cracks. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, we have Lynn Vedeca. Okay, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, thank you very much. I'm Lynn Videcka. I am Dean and Carol T. Mowbray Co Collegiate Professor at the University of Michigan School of Social Work. I want to speak in support of the use of the American Rescue Plan and County General Funds for children's savings accounts. Children's savings accounts are a demonstrated effective means of building capital to support a child's education and to motivate families to think ahead to college education for their children. Several demonstration and evaluation studies conducted by UM professors William Elliott and Trina Shanks, who spoke earlier, have shown the program to be effective in building education-oriented planning on the part of families with limited income. The nonpartisan government accounting office studied 700,000 children enrolled in 82 different children's savings account programs across the United States. They found, and I quote, positive short-term effects on families including those with lower incomes. These effects include increased participation in children's savings account programs, uh, increased amounts saved, and increased educational expectations. Supporting children's savings accounts for low-income families is a wise public investment that aids educational opportunity for the highest need children in Washington County. Thank you very much. And yes, I do live in Washtenaw County. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we've got Ben Feynman. Uh, thank you and good evening, commissioners. So I have uh, spoken with you a lot over the, the past months and years. So I'll be brief. Um, I think the, the only thing new that I have to say, oh, I, I didn't start off with my introduction. Uh, I am calling in uh, from uh, Linden Township. This is Ben Feynman, the, uh, the Vice Chair of the Washtenaw County Broadband Task Force. 
So the, the only new thing I have to share with you tonight is that l last month, the, uh, the su supply chain issues that we've been concerned about regarding broadband construction have become to or started to come true. Uh, AT&T AT reported on uh, their investor call in August that they're going to miss their fiber construction target for 2021 by uh, 500,000 households. So if AT&T is not able to use their preferred status to maintain their supply chain, you, you can be sure that the, uh, the smaller providers and uh, local government entities and other people who are building fiber are going to be at the back of the line. Um, as discussed, Washtenaw County still has the chance to be toward the front of the line. We're, we're miles ahead of many other communities that are looking at how to uh, address broadband expansion. Um, so I will just close by once again uh, expressing my appreciation and congratulations for uh, the Board of Commissioners uh, for being at the, uh, the, the, the one yard line of this, um, what Barb uh, correctly flagged as at least a five year journey, um, if not longer than that. So thank you very much. Thank you. Next up, we've got E-Elevate. Hello, I'm sorry, I changed my name. Um, my name is Eric Anderson. Um, I'm speaking in support of the Conviction Integrity and Expungement Unit. Um, I myself is a, is a success story. Um, I'm a designer. I was incarcerated for nine years of my life um, for a crime I did not commit. I support the Conviction Integrity Unit because if it wasn't for that, I would still be in prison today. Um, I've been free for two and a half years, um, living a, a, a successful, productive life in that short amount of time. And I would just want you guys to consider the fact that as many individuals that's spending time, idle time, um, with, with things, with, with ideas for the world to, to see. Um, it's a very touchy situation because anytime a man or a woman is accused of a crime and have to go suffer consequences for something they ain't do, it's very gut-riching. Um, a lot of you guys have backgrounds in law and in mental health. And I, and I believe that those things should help you guys rationalize that this is a good step for Washington County. Um, I'm a citizen of the city of Detroit and I was released, you know, in part, I mean, because of the Wayne County Conviction Integrity Unit. Um, I think that ultimately the job of a commissioner, of a county commissioner is to come with ideas that can help the community. Um, um, forward thinking, thinking for the future. And I don't think it's fair for, for you guys to just sit idle and continue to let these kind of things happen. Um, change is, is needed. Um, I just hope you guys see the light. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Next up we have Liz Lynn. Hi, my name is Liz Lynn and I'm an Ann Arbor resident and a parent in the Ann Arbor Public Schools. For the last few months, I've been working alongside other AAPS parents, local childcare providers, and other community partners to try to find solutions to the before and aftercare crisis in the district. First, I wanna thank you commissioners for your support in terms of trying to find solutions to this crisis, both temporary and long-term. So many of you have understood from the very beginning what a huge problem this is and how deeply it would impact the lives of Washtenaw County residents. You immediately understood that this issue disproportionately affects women, families of color, low-income families, single parents, immigrant parents, and you needed no convincing that this issue merited your time and labor and resources. So thank you all, especially Commissioner Labar, who I've spoken with many times and has worked very hard on this. I am so grateful that the proposal for ARP funds that you're allocating or voting on today has 2 million allotted for childcare. And I just wanted to put in a plug on behalf of working families and AAPS to approve that. 
because childcare is so desperately needed, especially before and after care for working families. I can't tell you how many parents I've spoken with in the last few months who've li whose lives have been upended by the elimination of this program and an accessible before and after care program would completely change their lives. I would also encourage you to direct some of these funds to child care providers who are trying to provide the daily before and after school care that the district is not offering this year and who need more funding to be able to recruit and pay staff a competitive wage. I'm also advocating for the county to continue to be a leader in the long term strategic planning for before and after care. I am concerned based on how the district has responded to community concerns that they are not as invested as the county is in finding solutions. So I think that your ongoing participation in leading this effort would be critical. Thank you all again for making sure that the most marginalized families in our community have the childcare support they need, especially in the wake of the losses they incurred during the pandemic. Thank you. Uh, next up we have Mary Campbell. You have to unmute. Can you hear me now? Yes. Thank you. Um, good evening. My name is Mary Campbell and I work for Washtenaw County. I am the Ask Me Local 2733 Unit B Chair. I do not represent either of these organizations in my speech to you tonight. I'm here to talk to you tonight about the resolution being put forth to you regarding the CMH final budget 2021. In this resolution, the CMH department is calling for an elimination of 21 vocational positions in the vocational program, 21 skills trainers to be exact. I'd like to point out that this is a state mandated program and is going to highly impact the services that Washtenaw County has protected, has provided, excuse me, to the developmentally disabled and mentally impaired consumers and clients. We have not been given any signs that proper notification went out to the consumers or clients who were being serviced before COVID that the program was being drastically reduced and they would need to find the services elsewhere. Vocational services are, I'm going to butcher this word, habilitative in nature, and while important, are not critical to the health and safety of individuals is what CMH would have you believe. But I, believe, but I feel this is not true. If you are the caregiver or the consumer receiving these services, this can sometimes be your only break for some quiet time to yourselves or the only time to get out of the house for some of the programs we offered. Mentally, this can be crit the critical point to your health and maybe the safety of others. Let's not kid ourselves because we all get stressed out from being overworked or dealing with everyday situations. The skills trainers are the lowest paid employees in the county. They don't do it for the money. They do it for public service to assist our consumers. Many have built relationships with the consumers over the years, celebrating achieved goals and sharing in the frustrations of an unachieved goal. I don't know if any of you actually have a family member or a friend who has been in need of these kinds of services, but I have. So I know firsthand how critical these services are. Labor has been working with administration to find a resolution, but we are not there yet. I am asking for you to please not pass the resolution until we come to a better understanding of the future of this program within CMH. I'd also like to take a moment to talk about the equality pay for social workers in general. Um, many workers, whether in the Delana Center or whether in other service providers are truly underpaid for what they do. Somewhere along the line, I'd like to see where we could come to a resolution and maybe um, up the pay for social workers in certain situations. That's going to conclude my speech. And I wanna thank you for listening to me tonight. Thank you. Next up, we've got Amy Picard. Hi there, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, my name is Amy Picard and I'm calling from Ann Arbor, Michigan. And um, I just wanted to second what Liz Lynn already spoke about this evening. I am a parent in the Ann Arbor public school system 
and I'm also a small business owner um, here in Ann Arbor. Um, before and after school care is critical to my family and many other working families in the community. Um, I really wanna say a big thank you to the county commissioners um, when offering to use some of the American Rescue Plan funds to help relieve the childcare crisis that has been caused by the discontinuation of the before and after school program. Um, thank you so much for hearing our pleas for help with this situation. And thank you for allocating funds um, for these um, much needed um, programs. Um, I'm excited to hear about how these funds could be used. Um, and I look forward to hearing more about how you guys um, plan on using them to help working families um, in the community. So thank you again, and um, that's it. Thank you. All right, next up we've got Ron Milkey. Hello, commissioners and fellow county residents. My name is Ron Milkey, and I am the supervisor of Manchester Township out in the far western part of Washtenaw County. I would like to offer support tonight for the commissioners with respect to, speaking, uh, to spending a portion of the COVID relief funds to complete broadband connection to every home in the county. You are in a unique position today to allow Washtenaw County to be one of the first counties in the entire state to provide broadband connection to 100% of county residents. I would like to remind the commissioners that by completing broadband connection to rural homes in the outlying rural townships, uh, this will allow residents to work from home, attend medical appointments, connect with other residents, and attend school, both K through 12 and college, without leaving their homes. This past year and a half of COVID hardship has certainly brought this need to light. Like electricity, I believe broadband should be considered a utility and the commission today has the ability to fund broadband connectivity to every home in the county with money that's currently available to do so. And I would encourage you to make that decision. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Right. Next up, Kenneth Nixon. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Right. My name is Kenneth Nixon. I am an exoneree from Wayne County. I spent 15 years and nine months incarcerated for a crime that I didn't commit. I was recently exonerated February 18th, 2021. I am now the current chairman of the National Organization of Exonerees. I am here before you today to speak on behalf of the Washington County Prosecutor's Office and to request adequate funding for the Conviction Integrity Unit. Myself, along with other exonerees within my network, are firsthand testaments of what it looks like to get justice right. Sadly and unfortunately, it took all of us decades to see that justice happen. A big part of the delay in that justice was funding. The offices and the entities that were charged with helping us prove our innocence were not adequately funded. I've got guys in my network that the investigation took over two years to prove that they were innocent. And it was simply because the Conviction Integrity Unit didn't have the funding to hire investigators or to properly fund the investigation as necessary. So myself, and I speak on behalf of exonerees all over this country. When I say that adequate funding for a conviction integrity unit is an integral part of the justice system. We don't always get it right. Mistakes get made. New information comes to light. Science grows. These are things that we can't control. But you guys are in a position to ensure that a properly funded conviction integrity unit within your county operates the way that it should. And I myself personally ask that you please fund whatever the number is that is being asked of you because you have no idea what it feels like to sit on a bunk for decades of your life incarcerated for a crime that you didn't commit. When I went to prison, my son was one years old. I am now watching him accept college offers. I cannot 
say this loud enough. The keys to the purse strings that you hold are more important than you think. And there's a life on the other end of that dollar. Thank you. That's what we got, Melanie Bell. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, my name is Melanie Bell. I'm from the Ypsilanti Township. Um, and I just wanted to be, say something in support of broadband. Broadband is an in essential infrastructure which provides citizens access to health, education, information, and jobs. And we have a unique opportunity here, and I feel it is imperative that we leverage this chance to provide all our re residents access to the resources they need to succeed. And I also wanted to thank the commissioner, commissioners for their support so far in the broadband efforts. Thank you. Thank you. Next up we've got Lisa Martino. Thank you, Commissioner Hodge. Good evening, Commissioners. It's Lisa Motino from Manchester Township, uh, Manchester Township trustee and staff support for the Broadband Task Force. I just simply want to echo what others have already said this evening about the broadband uh, item on your American Rescue Plan funding um, resolution this evening. And thank you for your leadership and your support for the Broadband Task Force. Supporting this um, a resolution would mean the world to the residents of Manchester Township and all of our rural communities for that matter. Um, it would be a legacy that you could leave that would improve the quality of life for the residents here on the western side of the county. And I thank you again for your leadership on the issue. Thank you. All right, I'm not seeing any other hands. Um, this is going to give us a couple of more moments for anybody else that wants to get public. Oh, now we got somebody else on here. Joel Letter Anderson. You are unmuted, so you may begin at any time. Okay, while well, you work out the technical situation there, I'm gonna move on to Carrie Rangans. Can you hear me now? Oh, okay, go ahead, go ahead. Oh. Yep, we can hear you now. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so my name is Juletta Anderson. I am a clinical social worker in Ypsilanti. Um, I also live in Ypsilanti Township. Um, and I've worked with a number of organizations in the area supporting clients um, from all walks of life. And so I am joining to express my support um, for premium pay to essential service essential service workers. Um, and I say that especially because we provide a lot of services before, during, and continues to provide those services to clients in the area. Um, I also would like to express my support um, for the Condition Integrity Unit. Um, I believe that it's important for us to take care of um, all of our um, community members um, to the best of our ability. Um, and this is one of those ways to do that. Um, and I'd also like to express my concern um, about the reduction um, in funding for CMH. Um, as a social worker that has been in the area for about seven years now, um, these services are um, important to all of our clientele. Um, and really ensure that we are um, not missing folks and letting folks slip through the cracks. And so I wanna express my um, concern about the cuts to CMH in particular. So I really encourage um, you all to um, reconsider those cuts and, and possibly consider increasing in the funding for CMH. Thank you. Thank you. All right, Carrie, you're up next. Good evening, commissioners. Um, I'm Carrie Rangans, a resident of Ann Arbor and a member of the Washtenaw County Board of Health. And I wanted to provide a couple comments today in support of a number of items on your agenda. 
Um, first, I would like to um, encourage you to approve the Washtenaw County Health Department's budget. We've had a lot of work on this, as you, as you know, over the year and a half of the COVID pandemic with lots of um, extra funds coming in and different um, funding changes. So the staff has worked really, really hard to keep things moving and um, really make sure we're delivering our basic services to our community. So please do approve their budget. Um, also, in case um, it, the word hasn't gotten around to the whole board of commissioners, we did um, at our Friday board of health meeting, we wrote and passed a resolution urging the health officer to please create a mask mandate in all K-12 schools per CDC guidance. And so um, I know you you get notes from our meetings, but it's usually like you know, a month or something behind schedule. So I just wanted to make sure folks were aware that the Board of Health did um, pass that resolution on Friday. And so we're hoping that we can see some mask mandate for all the K-12 schools in our county, um, especially given the Delta variant and the number of people who attend schools who are not eligible for vaccination right now. Um, I also want to support funding for child care uh, for, for folks in our community. And I also want to share support for the children's savings accounts. Um, it's going to be really helpful for the long-term um, success of our community members. So thank you for having that on the agenda tonight. And I support that as well. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, we've got Noah Coward. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, <clears throat> my wife and I, uh, Alex, are uh, new residents of Washtenaw County. We are currently in uh, Northfield Township. I'm just calling in to uh, express our support for the funding of the broadband uh, connection uh, plan. Uh, you know, <clears throat> we moved into, like I said, uh, into this residence uh, about three months ago, and, and I and hope to make this uh, the home that we stay in for the rest of our lives with our, our new son. Um, you know, the connection issues that we've come to realize are, are, are pretty prevalent in this area. Uh, they're, they're, they're pretty concerning to us, um, to the point to where we're concerned about, um, you know, eventual connection for, uh, our child moving forward and, and, and that sort of thing. So, um, we just wanted to, uh, call on and voice our support for that. Um, and, uh, I appreciate your time. Thank you. All right, we've got Larry Darnell Smith Jr. Hello. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, yes, uh, I'm calling concerning the uh, Conviction Integrity Unit, the funding. I, I served 26 years, 10 months, and seven days for a crime I didn't commit. And it was horrible, a purity travesty. And I can't tell you how many people I've met from Washington County who has experienced and is experienced currently what I was experiencing inside of that place, which was purity. I let y'all feel the words in. So I just want um, somebody to understand that the lives that's associated with the money, maybe we need to do a GoFundMe, no disrespect, but our lives have value. Our parents' lives have value. When I came, when I went, my mother was young and vibrant. When I came out, she's on a walker, bent over, hunched over. And that partially that was the stress that concerned her with my conviction. So I'm here on behalf of Deborah Smith, here on behalf of Nakira Bullard, which is my daughter, and speaking on behalf of those that's innocent in Washington County, please fund them. Please supply them with more resources. Please. I'm not a person who beg, but for people's lives, I will. Please help. That's all I have to say. Larry Darnell Smith Jr., thank you. National Organization of Exonerees. Thank you. Okay, now there are no more hands. So I'm gonna give people a few more moments. If you've been thinking about, oh, do I wanna give public comment? I know it can be challenging to give public comment at a meeting like this. So I'm very grateful for people's willingness to do so. Uh, now's another opportunity to do that before we move on. All right. And I would remind people too that this is our ways and means committee meeting. After this meeting, we have our Board of Commissioners meeting where you will have another opportunity to give public comment. Um, this there, there were comments made about uh, the start time of this meeting. The website lists the Board of Commissioners meeting is starting at 645, but this is Ways and Means and it starts at 630. Uh, so there's a second meeting right after this one that um, we listed starting at 645, but 
never does because this meeting always goes on for a while. Uh, I filled the air to give people some time there to to talk. I'm uh, not, not seeing any other hands. So I'm going to move out of citizen participation into Commissioner. Oh, Commissioner Shink, were, were you? I'm, I'm going to call on you for follow up unless you want to say something. Are you trying to say something before follow up? No, okay. All right, you just want to be first in line. Very well. Okay. Uh, moving on to Commissioner follow up to citizen participation, I will move over to Commissioner Shink. Thank you, Chair. And um, I want to thank everybody who's come out to talk tonight. It's really important that we have robust community engagement in our meetings, and it's really great to, to, to hear all of your comments. I'm not going to address every single one, although I suspect that by the time all of, the, all of us commissioners get done talking, that somebody will have addressed everyone. And so I just wanted to start with saying thank you. I want to address the funding for CMH. We're going to talk about that more later, but I want to make it really clear that this isn't about reduction in funding for CMH. It's about changing where the money, which is very much limited by Medicaid, Medicare, it's about changing where that money is, is being put. And I understand that there are issues. I'm not addressing the other issues. I just want to make sure everybody understands we are not talking about cutting CMH funding and, um, that the board is not able to supplement this funding. And so, um, and also that 22 positions will remain in the vocational program. The vocational program is not going away. I believe there's um, another commissioner who is going to address this in, in more detail. Um, we will be addressing the um, American Rescue Plan funding later on in the meeting. I wanna emphasize before we move on that this is the first of several packages and that we are still very, very open to community input. It's very important. And that um, we also have to work within the constraints of, on the American Rescue Plan. But I, I just wanna make sure that people understand that, that we are still working on this as a work in progress. And that so, some of these suggestions that people are talking about, like um, further supports to learning or supporting smaller organizations, that those are, those are issues that we are working on. And then I wanna talk about the, the, um, wrong, or the wrongful, con or the conviction integrity unit. And, and I wanna thank you, Mr. Cotton, Mr. Anderson, and Mr. Nixon, and Mr. Darnell Smith Jr. for coming to talk to us tonight about your experiences because it's really important that we understand just what the stakes are. I wanna emphasize that right now, there is a lawyer working in, um, in that position at the prosecutor's office that was funded by an, an outside grant that the prosecutor got in which I'm very grateful that he was able to. And so we're talking about continued funding of this position and our administrator is committed to working with the prosecutor to find a way forward through this. Um, I personally believe that wrongful, wrongful conviction is one of the most egregious things that a government can do and that it's important that we make sure that um, our government is, is also working to support those who may have been wrongfully convicted. And as I said, there, there is actually a lawyer in that position right now. And what we're looking at is funding going forward. Our administrator is committed to working with the prosecutor to finding a path forward. Um, and so that's where we are. And so actually that is all that I wanted to say for the um, comments after the um, public comment, and thank you very much. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Labar. Thanks, Chair. I appreciate it. Um, I, I think our chair uh, rather adeptly described the CMH situation, uh, but I would say um, this this CMH budget and what we're voting on tonight uh, is not a standalone. It is part of. A, a larger CMH statewide system uh, that interacts with the federal government and that is governed in many ways vis-a-vis uh, -vis Medicaid uh, by federal and state regulation. So we're, we're part of a larger ecosystem. And what's happened with COVID, uh, as was said on another issue, many of the existing disparities in a number of, of arenas of, of, of public policy have been uh, displayed and exacerbated. Um, CMH staff have been on the front lines continuing to do uh, their work and, and, and they've worked hard and they've done uh, laudable work. 
these aren't cuts to CMH or to CMH services. This is a reconfiguration of what sorts of positions we're going to fund based on the reality of the, of, the, of the funding that is attached to those positions. I don't know anybody uh, that isn't supportive of the vocational work that does directly, but please keep in mind, CMH has five additional partners that we work with to provide those services for individuals. So if CMH isn't doing it, uh, it is being done, that, that mandated service is being provided, our obligation both legal and moral, is, is being met. However, when it comes to clinical services, uh, which, which are not unimportant and which I, I feel like get glossed over in this discussion, um, you know, you're talking, you're talking case management, uh, you know, things like the IDD program. These aren't, these aren't insignificant services, and they have been under-resourced for some time now. This is a shift uh, to, to, to meet that need, and it's, it's a critical need. And CMH, Washtenaw County, uh, us, we are the only ones providing those services, which again are, are vital. Um, finally, I, I, I just want to say I really appreciate the work that's in the locals and so many uh, in, in labor in general. You know, Bob King is on our CMH board. So many of the have done a great job in terms of talking about uh, the, the, the need for those existing relationships uh, and the value that our labor partners bring to the table. And, I, and I, I, I couldn't agree more. I am hopeful that when we're looking at the next year or two or three, that we're going to be able to have a net increase of my CMH positions because of ramping clinical services back up to where it needs to be. So I would ask folks tonight to move this forward to Ways and Means. Uh, I think that will give the time uh, that Mr. Mason asked for in terms of additional time to, to iron out the remaining differences. Um, and it's going to be the right step for CMH and Washtenaw County as a system in terms of making sure it's got the funding necessary to provide these vital clinical services and, frankly, to, to help our CMH system succeed in a terrible statewide global system when it comes to funding and, and, and regulation. None of this is ideal, but this budget seeks to do the very best we can with, with, with our CMH efforts. Uh, Chair, I've, I've, I've probably talked longer than I should have and more than folks would like, so thank you. Well, I liked it and I appreciate you providing that additional context. Um, we want uh, Commissioner Beeman. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I also want to thank everyone who came to speak tonight from uh, wrongful imprisonment to child care to every issue that, that was brought forward to us tonight is so important and is taken to heart by all the members of this board. Um, I especially want to thank those who came forward with their requests and support for broadband. Uh, the one thing that I would like to stress is that this isn't just a west side of the county issue. We hear a lot from those on the west side, as there are many of us that are impacted, but nearly every township in Washtenaw County is impacted by the lack of broadband service. And what we're looking to do with this package is going to touch our residents in a number of count of townships, uh, Ann Arbor Township, Webster Township, Superior Township, York Township, Bridgewater Township, Freedom Township, Sylvan Township, Lima Township, Sayo Township, Lodi Township, Saline Township, Dexter Township, Pittsfield Township, Augusta Township, Manchester Township, Northfield Township, and Ypsilanti Township. So. I just say those out loud because those are our residents and those are numbers of homes that are real, uh, upwards of 3,000 that we're going to be uh, impacting with these dollars. So uh, you've heard healthcare, schools. Um, the one point I would like to add in is jobs. 
and not only people accessing work via the internet, but the numbers of jobs are gonna be bringing in when we not only start the project, but to keep these homes running, we all know our internet doesn't work the way we want it to, even if we live in a great connectivity area. And we're gonna need bodies to come uh, to our homes, to help service, to help install all of those things. So we're also looking at being job creators when we look at creating broadband access for all within Washtenaw County. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we've got Commissioner Scott up next. Thank you, Chair. Um, I will keep my comments uh, brief. I just wanna make a few notes. Um, one's on the vocational program. Oh, I am not so muted. I thought I was muted. Uh, one's on the vocational um, program that we heard people talk about tonight. I, I just wanna reemphasize as Commissioner LaVar and Commissioner Schink did that we are not as a board of commissioners talking about decreasing the budget to CMH. This is CMH's budget that they are presenting to us tonight that they're asking for us to approve. I think that Commissioner Labar's insight about taking this through ways and means um, and recognizing what President Mason said about giving them more time to figure out what's happening with the vocational program before we have this back in two weeks is important. I would not like to see the vocational program um, eliminated and I think we've gotten to the point where we've recognized how we can reshuffle positions because those jobs are important jobs for people to have in the county. On this same agenda, uh, I will point out to my peers on the commission, we are on the full board, we have several um, requests for people asking to be exempted from our living wage ordinance, ordinance that work with uh, CMH. Uh, I don't want to see the vocational program outsourced to be um, having people have even lower wages than they have right now uh, that are doing this important work in the county. The seams of what we've heard at, at this meeting tonight, uh, like go through everything. We've also heard people come and talk to us that work in social services and on the front line and talk about um, the pay that they've gotten, especially as being frontline people responding to the pandemic. And I just don't wanna see us outsource vocational programs where people might not be getting benefits, um, healthcare and their wages cut for doing this important work. So I'm glad to see that we've made changes to keep the vocational program in the county. And I think that they're making good progress uh, with labor and administration and trying to figure out exactly what to do so, so I think it's a, a good thing to think about taking this through ways and means, but keeping a close eye on what's happening when it comes back to us at the full board in two weeks. Uh, and I just want to note that I will keep a close eye as we go forward too on these entities asking for exemptions from our living wage because um, paying somebody $11 an hour or $7.25 an hour, um, it, it's not enough to support yourself or a family on and does more to increase these equity issues that we see across the county. Um, I also wanna thank people who came to talk to us about childcare in Washtenaw County and uh, in particular talking about the work that Commissioner Labar has done with council member Song uh, and talking about getting after school care um, programs back and running or trying to figure out what we can do. I want to uh, let you know, I, I empathize a lot with this. I used after school programming myself. When we did have some discussions, um, informal discussions with certain members of the Board of Education, I know that there was some discussion about the county potentially making up the difference in labor costs uh, with some of our, our uh, funds uh, is, is something I floated at one of those meetings. Um, in these informal meetings, that was that offer that we made was rejected. Uh, so we're back to trying to figure out other ways that we can help uh, with childcare uh, for working parents because that's a real issue and it's a very much a concern. Um, broadband, I want to just note that I am fully supportive as I have been from the start with Commissioners Beeman and Commissioner Maciejewski, and I'm committed to do what I can to try to 
uh, make broadband a reality for 100% of the people in our county. To that end, one of the things I've asked uh, the county commission to do is to think about how we can also um, help people with internet affordability. There is a program that some internet providers have for people who meet federal poverty levels, but not for people who are in the missing middle. We do have something on the agenda tonight for that using the American Rescue Plan funds, but I'm sorry to say I find it an abysmally low amount of money and I'm disappointed in the lack of planning uh, for that and the amount of money given to that. And I'm hopeful that we can think about how we increase that money going forward. Um, and finally, for those of you who came to talk about exoneration and expungement units at the prosecutor's office, I 100% felt very moved. Um, I, I did note at one point that Commissioner Beeman and I had tears in our eyes thinking about missing major portions of your family's life and what that meant to you. So um, you have a sympathetic ear uh, for me and I will be interested to see how we continue to work with the prosecutor's office to make this a reality here in Washtenaw County um, that is gonna be high on my list going forward. So thanks everyone for indulging me. Thanks for coming to uh, talk to us tonight at our meeting. I love hearing from people and thank you, Chair. Thank you. Now we've got Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Chair. Um, first, uh, absolutely thank you to everyone who uh, has taken the time to speak with us tonight. Uh, we don't always have robust public comment uh, but I am glad that we did tonight because I think we have a lot of really, really important things in front of us, uh, particularly those things that we are looking to invest American Rescue Plan dollars in. Um, but we also have a lot of things that we should be considering in terms of what, what is the next round of, of funding for the American Rescue Plan? Where do we want to um, or where do we need to make further investments uh, after the, decision, the decisions that we make tonight? I think we're allocating um, something like 24 million, uh, if I read that number correctly, uh, but we have 72 million um, in total dollars from the American Rescue Plan to ultimately spend. So this is just the beginning. Um, we've been very, very intentional as an entire board and huge kudos to Chair Schink and Peter Linderman on our staff um, for really organizing those efforts along with each of us commissioners. Uh, I, I would like to encourage folks here tonight to encourage other units of government in our county to also engage in some robust public um, engagement around where they are spending their dollars. Um, because we are only one unit of government, um, I would like to think a very important unit of government in the county, but uh, every municipality in the county has received some amount of American Rescue Plan dollars, I believe. So I certainly encourage you to, to reach out to those other local units of government as well. Um, I heard a couple of things tonight in regard to the American Rescue Plan funds. One, spend big on transformational investments. Two, spend on small grassroots things. Uh, those are uh, seemingly somewhat uh, different comments, um, but uh, I think that what I've heard over the last uh, couple of months of talking with folks about the American Rescue Plan funds, uh, I really do think it's a mix of things. Trying to figure out where we can um, invest in people who need the resources most, uh, not within certain city boundaries or district lines, but looking at the immediate needs of our residents, where, can, where do we need to help right now? Uh, and then looking at um, primarily where can we invest in long-term transformational change? Uh, I think some of them you're seeing tonight, I think broadband is something that I would identify as long-term transformational change for uh, many of the, um, not just the rural parts of our counties, but many of the rural parts of our counties and some of the other um, edges of the urban parts of our county. And then we're looking at affordability and increased access that absolutely relates to uh, literacy and a whole number of uh, concerns around equity throughout our community as well through the investment in affordability of broadband internet. Uh, so we're trying to do some of that here tonight and we have a lot more to discuss. So this is just the beginning. Um, but I think that we're really trying to uh, emphasize this transformational change with an eye towards uh, racial equity and economic inequality, trying to address these two critical deep 
concerns throughout our county. We know we have incredible amounts of racial and economic inequality throughout Washtenaw County. Um, I just want to emphasize that we should be looking at uh, this in terms of individuals and human beings rather than any sort of just single municipal boundary line or district line. When I look at where we're spending American Rescue Plan dollars, I don't just say, what are we spending in my specific district? And I don't think any of us should be or are doing that, but, um, uh, but I would hope that we continue with that spirit of saying, where are we helping human beings, individuals most in need, and where are we looking at investing in transformational change to address intergenerational poverty and inequality? I think that's what we're trying to do here, and we're, we're making some initial investments here tonight, but I hope that we'll continue with that spirit. Uh, and I share that particularly for the folks who are sharing thoughts with us uh, to give some, some lens as to how we've been looking at this over the last several months that we're talking about this. We're glad you're here tonight. We hope you'll stick with us. Um, but just know that this isn't the first time that we're talking about this. We have been talking about these issues for, for many, many weeks and being very intentional about making sure that we're getting the word out there so that those of you who are here tonight heard that we're talking about this and hopefully you'll share that with others and feel free to keep in touch with us uh, as we move forward. Uh, a couple of quick points, broadband. I absolutely believe we need to fund broadband. Um, when I was had the honor of serving as chair the last couple of years before January, uh, I would always talk about broadband and Eastside Recreation Center, long-term planning and environmental concerns uh, as, as primary projects because I think we as a board have looked at how do we make sure that we're, we're caring for every part of our county, not just the urban areas or the rural areas or Ann Arbor or Ypsilanti, but how do we make sure that we're prioritizing the needs of every part of our county? And this is just one piece of that. Um, so I think that is huge. I'm glad to see that we are, we're finally having the resources to move this forward in a really, really meaningful way. Uh, to a point made by, I believe Ron earlier, um, I strongly believe broadband should be a public utility and it should be more highly regulated. Uh, but until we hit a point where that is the case, uh, we have to do what we're doing today of investing public resources into what will ultimately go to private entities uh, as sort of an agreement to increase access. I wish we could just tell them you have to provide access for everyone, uh, but unfortunately we cannot do that. That's my soapbox of the day there. Uh, but I'm also glad to say we're investing in things like weatherization that are that I don't think anybody has mentioned here tonight, but I am a, a huge supporter of something as simple and clear as weatherization, because this is a program where we're going to help low, generally low income families throughout the county. There's no like requirement of living in one zip code or district or another, but residents throughout the county make their homes more efficient, which is incredibly positive for the environment, um, but it will also help them save money on their utilities. This is one of those things that is really good nerdy policy, but maybe isn't the sexiest thing in the world. Um, but I'm really glad to see that we're moving that forward. Um, Childcare access, uh, thank you again to Commissioner Labar for being part of uh, really leading that effort. Uh, as we've heard, I know several of us have been on a lot of calls uh, we've heard from residents that are deeply concerned about their ability to provide childcare for their children. I think this is something that um, crosses uh, income levels and job classifications. I think we have a lot of folks in our community uh, who are having very, very worried about how they're going to make sure their kids have childcare as things reopen and as they're not even as they're going back to work. A lot of these folks have already been working through this pandemic and haven't been able to work from home. So uh, that is incredibly important. Conviction integrity, I would love to see that come back to us. I know that's something that I've, I've spoken with a couple of the folks who've been on this line tonight and I've had conversations with um, Prosecutor L.A. Savitt uh, about this. Um, for, I don't know if it's the most appropriate route is to come through the budget process as we consider structural requests or investments, whatever way makes the most sense, but I just wanna express my support that hopefully that would come back to us at some point. Uh, to consider that. Uh, and then lastly, I just want to mention to those who are talking with us um, who are social workers and the need to support social workers throughout the community. Um, I look forward to learning more about that proposal and, and having conversations with some of you. Um, I think we've had just, we've done a huge disservice to our social workers, our grocery store workers, our teachers, our nurses, our frontline workers throughout this pandemic. 
Uh, we've spent a lot of time in the county over the last couple of years making sure that we're trying to hold everyone working, contracting with the county to a living wage that is um, above $13 an hour. It's close to $15 an hour at this point. Uh, and we've spent a lot of time trying not only advocating for, it, but literally being sued uh, by providers trying to pay lower wages. And we are approving some of those uh, those exemptions tonight for those who have demonstrated that they don't have the ability to pay more. Um, but we've spent a lot of time trying to make sure that social workers are less poorly paid, um, perhaps is the best way to say that. Um, but I hear you and I think we do need to find a way to do more. Uh, I don't know exactly what that solution is, but I appreciate you all being here and look forward to talking with you more. All right, uh, thank you all very much. And uh, thank you, Chair. Nicely done. I think you hit almost all the points. Uh, very good. Commissioner Maciejewski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, I'm gonna reserve my comments on the American Rescue Plan until we get to that agenda item. But I would, um, you like to touch on the, the premium pay issue and the social worker uh, comments that were made. Um, and first of all, I want to you know, thank everybody for their comments tonight and coming out uh, uh, to go through a long public comment period and, and to thank everybody that I've talked to at the Chelsea Fair and Dexter Days and at the Gorge Fair about all these issues as well. As well. Um, so there is an avenue right now for and an opportunity for advocacy on the issue of pay for direct care workers. This is a state level issue. This is a Medicaid issue. And the state of Michigan right now in the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services budget, the legislature is debating a premium pay increase for those direct care workers. Um, it is stuck in the fiscal year 22 budget process and the legislature will be debating this during the month of September in the MDHHS budget. I would encourage everybody that has spoken tonight on this issue to contact your state representative and to contact your state senator and express your support for the premium pay increase for direct care workers. This is $2 an hour more for those direct care workers doing that service. Um, it, is, it is an active discussion. There's a lot of momentum behind it. And I hope that everybody who commented about that tonight will make those phone calls and those emails um, to get that premium pay um, into the state budget for people that are working um, as direct care workers across the entire state of Michigan. Um, you know, if, if you want to look into this issue more, and, and many of the people that spoke tonight are, are obviously very firsthand knowledgeable about it, there's a group called Impart Alliance, which is headed by a woman named Dr. Claire Luz at Michigan State University. And she has spent um, a couple of decades of her career working on direct care issues. And I would encourage you to connect with the Impart Alliance as well on this advocacy um, to make this change. Yeah, the, this is a it, fundamentally a Medicaid issue. Um, the ability to raise wages means the state needs to put more money into the Medicaid system through the Michigan Department of Health and Human Services. Uh, so you know, the advocacy is prime right now over the next month on this particular issue uh, to urge our state legislature and the governor um, to do this. So with that, uh, I'll talk about American Rescue Plan stuff later on, but I uh, appreciate the time, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Mr. Sanders. Um, I'd just like to thank everyone who took the time to um, call in um, or attend our uh, town halls or otherwise share communications with us. Um, it was actually pretty exciting for me to see that people were so active and, and actually you know, took the charge to reach out and share their comments and their concerns and their wishes with us. So that's first for all of our constituents. Um, I, I do wanna say that I, support um, the Conviction Integrity Unit. Um, I think that there's a, a whole lot of uh, racial history that goes along with incarcerating people um, unfairly um, and without um, adequate evidence. Um, and we should at least consider 
this unit in terms of we spend a lot of money to put people behind bars. So we should be willing to spend some money to make sure that that we are are not um, imprisoning people that are are innocent. Um, I also support the social service workers, um, some of whom live in my district, and I've actually had the opportunity to meet with either virtually or in person. Um, and I cannot imagine um, in, in many instances having a, a four-year degree and coming out of school with some level of debt and working for you know, 10 or $11 an hour. Um, I do, I do believe that there is a, we can find ways to support without um, always having to go very deep into our pockets because the county's funding is not the only funding that's available. So whether or not there's advocacy on, on the part of trying to change some systemic procedures that are uh, far beyond being outdated I think that there are more than more ways for us to help in addition to trying to maintain uh, the current level of hourly rate that they're getting in part because of COVID. Um, the living wage waiver, waivers, I've, I've expressed concern about that um, because we've voted to have a $15 an hour living wage. And I think that um, we should be very extremely strenuous about offering those waivers um, because at the end of the day, it's the residents um, and we need people to be able to live in the county that we're asking them to work in. And I think lastly, I wanna express um, my concern that when it comes to broadband and the contracts that will go with that, that those contracts are ensuring, you can use the word concessions or community benefits like concessions. I don't care how you classify it, but we need to be making sure that those opportunities that come with um, providing broad, broadband to our entire county, um, offers opportunities for training and employment of our residents, whether it's installing them or maintaining them once they're installed. And I will not be comfortable with anything less if, I, if we're being told at some point later, oh, we really didn't have any control over that. We absolutely do. If we're spending our money, we have the right to ask that these vendors and these providers Make, make a real effort to provide opportunities, especially to some of the residents that do not have the connectability right now. They should be offered opportunities for training and employment. Um, that's it. Thank you. Uh, do we have any, oh, Commissioner Jefferson. Thank you, Chair. Uh, first, let me say thank you to everyone that uh, spoke this evening that uh, joined in our audience participation. It was definitely uh, a time to where we have heard things from you uh, in a way that, uh, that they deserve to be uh, looked at in a matter of what it is that we can do uh, to help this community, these communities all over the county. So I wanted to say uh, that the conviction integrity uh, unit is something that I, I will support wholeheartedly, uh, being that I do know uh, people that are within the family that I know, uh, uh, which which is you know ve been very hard on that family uh, for a long time. And the gentlemen who spoke today uh, have given a, a, a real uh, life uh, experience uh, meaning of what it means to have those dollars in a conviction integrity unit that successfully brings them home to their families. Uh, that is something that as Ms. Audrey Anderson said, uh, <clears throat> will eliminate the housing spending that we use to house those who are wrongly convicted. I also believe that the, uh, the child care dollars that we're looking at to uh, help uh, parents with child care 
should find a way into their hands because they are definitely struggling as they find, uh, you know, the time that they've uh, been in this COVID uh, has been real hard on them financially and has, has put some in, in financial uh, debt. So it's, it would be good to find a way to help ease their debt. So I'm trying to also believe that when we talk about broadband, we, we're talking about uh, equity. Uh, I believe we're talking about really just making equal access. When you talk about equity, you're talking about <clears throat> where there are uh, a lack of services in those areas where the opportunity uh, is, is not available, uh, where because of social economic uh, disparities over the decades. So actually we're talking about making this an equal opportunity of access throughout the entire county. Uh, there are some homes in Ypsilanti Township that will be uh, in this broadband. And it, I do believe that uh, it, it is needed because it gives our economy uh, a better way of uh, finding those who you know, are struggling to, to work, especially through COVID uh, at home without that resource there. There are definitely uh, some gaps that need to be uh, closed. Uh, we also uh, have in our community those uh, individuals who struggle uh, with uh, being able to find uh, food, uh, clothing, shelter, whether they are youth or whether they're elderly. Uh, we haven't really talked much about the older senior citizens uh, receiving some dollars with their uh, to help them deal with their issues also. So there's, uh, there's these disparities of, uh, that has caused a, a increase of poverty within the Eastern County to be over the 32% uh, threshold. And our 2015 uh, study that we have from OCED lets us know that uh, when you have a community that's over 30%, uh, poverty is hard to get back. We need to look at ways in diminishing that poverty uh, line uh, of, of percentage. I uh, appreciate everything that my colleagues have said this evening and before now to, to deal with racial equity and the things that they have uh, decided to do to help in, in some ways. Uh, there's still more that we can do uh, with our AIP dollars, with our, our next uh, allocations that will come forth after uh, we, we decide on these today or, or whenever we decide on them. So that we can find ways to, uh, you know, decentralize uh, poverty. It's it's been known that uh, those uh, uh, areas in, in in the township of Ypsilanti, city of Ypsilanti, and within uh, let's see Manchester and also Whitmore Lake. That these are these are areas that have the most need as far as equity goes when you talk about equity. So we have to have an, an eye on looking at, uh, let's say we're looking at right now, um, broadband. Okay, so that's something dealing with the opportunity index, more people that are getting those uh, dollars to provide them with access to an opportunity to have broadband. Um, are not within that uh, low opportunity areas. So we need to make sure that we are going to spend these dollars exactly how um, they can be more effective in bringing, uh, I guess, those who have the most need, the most the most funding. Uh, so I'm definitely going to <clears throat> talk more about those uh, issues as they come up in our meetings. I want to thank again everyone that came and uh, Yes, we need to look at wages uh, uh, and our and our premium pay for uh, those who were on these front lines. I mean, uh, you know, I know people who are doing that and have struggled with no benefits and uh, having a hard time with uh, you know getting back on their feet and maintaining. So it's a difficult decision, and as has been said, we the county we don't have money for everything that uh, can be. Uh, changed with funding but uh, there are other sources uh, that are that are within you know the lines of receiving uh, uh, that type of access and those uh, 
entities are, you know, available to uh, to provide things that can help our residents. So we need to look at partnering with certain uh, entities to help do all those things that uh, have been talked about tonight. Um, there's very little recreational activities for our children in uh, Eastern County. We're dealing with uh, under uh, funded school district. Uh, and so, you know, we need to find ways in, in, in bringing even just simple uh, uh, advanced placement classes are not available. You know, so things like that uh, are what I consider in need of uh, equitable uh, funding. So thank you for that. Thank you. Any other commissioners you want to go a second round? Comment? No? Okay. This is one of those things as chair when it's my turn, everybody has already said so much. Um, what I would say as a social worker, I'm really encouraged to see so many other social workers coming out uh, to engage and to give comment tonight. Uh, that was great to see. And I'm also grateful for everyone else that's come to give comment. Um, you know, I started my career at a community mental health. I've worked for Michigan Medicine at the Health Center. So I'm really sensitive to many of the issues that were brought up today. Uh, we're going to continue working on those issues as a, as a team. I'm sure our leadership team will talk about that as well. Um, as Commissioner Schink mentioned about the Conviction Integrity Unit, we're in active discussions around that and are hoping to have a resolution to that uh, very, very soon. Uh, I think everyone could hear from the comments that were made today. No one is against the Conviction Integrity Unit. It's just a matter of figuring out the specifics and how to make it work. Uh, I'm going to reserve my comments about the American Rescue Plan until later uh, when, we, when we get to that piece where we're talking about our Washington Rescue Plan. Um, so I'm going to move us on to new business. I will be looking for someone to move the agenda. Commissioner Labar. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'll move the agenda. We'll start with uh, new business under A, the uh, Public Defender 21-22 MD, MIDC Compliance and Annual Budget. Uh, B, Community Mental Health, the 2021 Final Budget Amendment. Uh, also to the 21-22 Annual Operating Budget. Uh, then under C, the Health Department, uh, the FY 2021 Final Budget Amendment. Under D, Information and Technology, uh, one is the above midpoint hire for Jeffrey T. Rose. Uh, e, Risk Management, one is approval of insurance premiums for October 1st, 21 to October 1st, 2022. Then under Board of Commissioners, we have uh, one, the obligation of American Rescue Plan and other funds. Uh, and then G under administration, the state assistance to address uh, damage to the, uh, to the community from the uh, June 25th and 26th flood event. Then to the 2021 general fund and non-general fund budget adjustments. Uh, and uh, that completes, uh, uh, then report of the administrator and that completes the agenda. Support. All right. Chair, I think we missed one. Oh, did we miss one? C2, which is FY 2021-22 annual comprehensive agreement. Thank you. So helpful to have you watching over us to make sure we just, we stay on track. There's, uh, a, lot, there's a lot to watch over. <laughs> especially tonight. I support second. Okay. Excellent. All right. Well, we are we're going to get into it. Uh, hope, hopefully our viewers at home have some popcorn because it's going to be a long meeting, but let's get into it. So we've got public defender up. Am I from public defender's office here? I think we do. Good evening, commissioners. How are you? Hey. So um, this is our, um, I'm presenting to you our um, Compliance plan and annual budget for um, 2021. And um, basically, it is um, uh, the compliance plan includes a, an expansion of some of our services, expansion to cover um, um, uh, and support the, the, uh, um, our expansion to the 15th district court that was that happened last year, um, expanding some of our. Um, uh, resources, our support for management and support for 
um, uh, support staff um, as we expand. We also are expanding, um, adding um, additional paralegals to our staff and requesting to expand our, um, speaking of social workers, expanding our AIM division, which is the advocacy, um, uh, our uh, social work program, our AIM, AIM division, and expanding that to um, add an additional social worker to, to our office. So I don't know if anyone has any questions. Very excited to hear about the expansion of the social workers in your office. Uh, commissioners, any questions or comments? Oh, we got a hand, Commissioner Morgan. Thank you, Chair. Uh, not a question, but just a, uh, I just want to clarify one piece. So Delphia, can you clarify for us, this is a significant increase in the provision of public defense services, right? Yeah, correct. Good. I just wanted to emphasize that. So it's the result of the state making a positive change that I believe was pretty bipartisan, actually. Correct. To that is correct. Significantly invest more resources into public defense for counties. Uh, I see your uh, timed lights have gone out. Yeah, so sorry. Yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, so this is a really, really positive thing coming from the state and we are implementing it here at the county level under your leadership uh, right. to provide much more public defense and to expand upon what we're doing. I just wanna emphasize how amazing this is, how phenomenal it is and how positive it is for our community and the residents that we're going to be serving, particularly as we've had a lot of folks speak with us tonight about um, some of the things that haven't worked in the uh, criminal justice system uh, in the past. So I think this is a really, really good thing and I'm very, very happy to support it and appreciate that we have you here implementing this great program and this huge increase in the work that we're able to do. So thank, thank you. you very much. Thank you. One of the things I wanna add is that some of the best practices that we're putting in place is to include wraparound services for our clients who are going through the criminal justice system. And so we're very, very excited about that. Excellent. Other thoughts, questions, anybody? Commissioner Shink. I think Commissioner Morgan said everything that um, I wanted to say. So I just wanna say that I'm really excited about this and, and the work that you're doing around criminal justice in general. Thank you very much. That sounds like a second to Commissioner Morgan's enthusiasm. Exactly. <laughs> Any other questions, comments? Okay, Robert, let's do it. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Item passed. All right. Excellent. Well, we are going to move on to community mental health now. Am I good to go? You are good to go. I can't see you. So you have in your packet the fiscal year 21 final budget amendment for CMH. Um, so this particular item is just bringing our revenue and expenses in line for our fiscal year end, um, as well as the programmatic changes that we've been discussing for vocational. And then the second item is our fiscal year 22 uh, annual operating budget. Um, so we will be bringing more information about the fiscal year 22 budget, um, probably in short order after the beginning of our fiscal year. Um, we only had so much information uh, to be able to prepare for this meeting. So we can look to do an amendment probably in October, November um, to bring some additional revenues in and account for some um, funding opportunities that we have in fiscal year 22. So happy to entertain any questions. Okay. We have any questions that need to be entertained? Mr. Labar? Thanks, Chair. Nicole, I guess just a leading question in order to sort of flag the point. Um, with CMH's budget, uh, and particularly as it relates to Medicaid-related dollars, um, are these increases sort of uh, structural and sustainable, or are they driven by uh, the, the, the 
Medicaid funding numbers that, that fluctuate with economic conditions and uh, is, is, is that here to stay or is that a somewhat lagging temporary blip based on outside forces? Um, so we do have some positive revenue uh, news moving forward. We've had some very favorable adjustments to our rates um, due to all the advocacy that um, took place, you know, beginning in our budget challenges in fiscal year 18 and fiscal year 19. So I am confident that our revenue is back on track um, to be able to support our operations. Um, you know, we've talked here a lot about the adverse relationship that there is between the economy and, um, you know, the Medicaid revenue for CMH. And the pandemic is really the perfect example um, of that. So we're in a very favorable revenue situation right now. And that is primarily due to the fact that um, you know, the economy was very questionable for a while. People were not losing their Medicaid eligibility. Um, obviously, lots of economic factors added to our additional revenues. So I, I do believe that our budget is stable, um, but a lot of the additional revenue that we see right now is considered a non-structural um, type of, of fund source. So it's not anything that we can plan to have um, moving forward. But with that said, I do feel like we are we are finally getting to a place that can actually support, um, you know, where we're at right now and our needs. Thank you. Thanks, Chair. All right. Do we have any other questions or comments? Okay, not seeing any. Okay, Robert. Commissioner Jefferson. Yeah. Commissioner Labar. Yes. Commissioner Machieski. Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Item passed. Thank you. Okay, moving on to that second item for CMH operating budget. Any questions from anybody? Now we can. Commissioner no Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman. Yes. Item passed. All right, we're gonna move on to the health department. Um, oh, hey, Jimena, I see you over there. Yes, good evening, commissioners. Um, so first item um, is requesting approval um, of our 2020-2020 uh, 2020-2021 final budget amendment. And um, I'll just highlight that of course, uh, because of uh, COVID response and the redirection of so many of our staff and so much of our resources to focus on COVID response really beginning in January of 2020, um, we do have uh, some uh, kind of continuing impact that certainly um, is ongoing in terms of operations and the redirection of these staff and resources. So we do anticipate that some of our, um, some of our uh, projects will be underspent. And so you will see that we are uh, having a proposed contribution to fund balance of $62,372. Um, part of this is not only due to uh, our, our inability to spend those projects, spend down on those projects because of the redirection of our resources towards COVID response, but also because there was a significant amount of additional funding that came from the state specifically to support COVID response efforts. So I'm happy to answer any other questions related to the uh, budget amendment. Any questions about the budget amendment? 
Nope. Okay. Mr. Stevenson, nope. Okay, let's uh, Robert. Commissioner Jefferson? Yeah. Commissioner LeVar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Item passed. All right, on to the annual comprehensive agreement. Yes, so the annual comprehensive agreement, uh, again, seeking approval from the Board of Commissioners. Um, we're presenting a budget that projects a use of, um, a use of fund balance um, for this next fiscal year in the amount of $142,679. We also have some staffing modica modifications that are included in that uh, budget proposal. Some of these staffing modifications are for the Washtenaw Health Plan. And just as a reminder, the Washtenaw Health Plan is a separate nonprofit organization embedded within the health department. Those posi positions are leased from the county. And we leverage federal, federal resources um, through the work that they do in Medicaid outreach and enrollment. So some of those positions, some of those um, staffing modifications are for the Washtenaw Health Plan, in addition to uh, a few for the health department as well. Um, and again, happy to answer any questions on, on the budget and the uh, comprehensive agreement. Any questions? Oh, everybody looks satisfied. All right, Robert. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Item passed. All right, moving it along. Thank you. You're welcome, thank you. Okay, so moving on to information and technology services. Do we have any questions or comments about this? Nope, not seeing any. Okay. Robert? Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Item passed. All right, risk management. Hey there, Judy. Were you gonna, you gonna say a little something before I ask those questions? Nope, I'm just here in case there are questions. Okay. Do we have questions for anybody? Nope. Okay. All right. Robert. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Item passed. Okay, thank you. All righty, let's move it on to, oh, well, this is the big one. I think this is why uh, many people tuned in today. Uh, let's, I would look for a motion on this before I, Start talking. Commissioner Shink. So move. Okay. Support for it. Support for it. Okay. So before we get into this, I'm going to just start off by saying that, as we've already talked about earlier today, this is just one. It's the first of several packages that we plan to have in obligating American Rescue Plan funds um, in what we're calling the Washington Rescue Plan. So as we're talking about this item today, I just want us to know that there are many important issues and initiatives that aren't included in this, this being just the first package. Uh, that's because that's not because those issues aren't a priority. They're absolutely a priority. And we're working on the next packages uh, to appear in the very near future. 
So the items in this package were selected because uh, many of them, they, they fit with our board priorities uh, and they're largely ready to be implemented. So we wanted to start moving quickly. There are a lot of other ideas, uh, many ideas that were talked about during public comment uh, and those that we came upon during our uh, engagement through the town halls. Uh, the, the funds, we have years to spend these funds uh, to address affordable housing, supporting our strong local economy, investing in our health and well-being and more. Uh, so those ideas are actively being discussed and developed so you can continue, you will continue to see these come up in our meetings to come. Um, so I want to turn this resolution over um, to Administrator Dill to say a few words before we get into Commissioner comments about it. Thank you, Chair. Commissioners, I'll be brief. I, I really just wanted to thank you all for uh, the council and the, the leadership that, that it took to get us here. I uh, also want to take the thank the administrator team, administrative team, excuse me. Uh, there's a lot of work that's gone into this over the last few months. I know that you all know and can appreciate all of the uh, interaction that's occurred. Uh, to me, this is the, as I said in a memo to you all, the intersection between the Board of Commissioner priorities, community feedback, the survey results. Uh, our organization and labor partners were had participated uh, on a number of occasions, we'll continue to collect that information. And we also had a few key external partners uh, that uh, we reached out to as a component of this process. Uh, as was mentioned many times, this is the first in a series. Uh, it is uh, my hope that we will have uh, proposal 2.0 back to you all within the next 30 days. And I, I would just say to you all, uh, I am very grateful uh, for the support that you all have displayed as we've moved through this. This represents to me a, ver a very balanced proposal and also begins the process of moving forward. Uh, many of the initiatives that we've been talking about over this past year uh, that are important to respond to trauma in the community and respond to a global pandemic. So just wanna say again, thank you to you all for your support around this item. All right, and thank you. So I'm going to turn it over to Chair Schink and then hit Commissioner Labar and then go on through the hands. Thank you, Chair. I'm not going to be brief because I have spent so many hours working on this that I am just really feeling, I, I realize this isn't a perfect package, but I'm really, really proud of what we've achieved, where we are, and where we're going to go over the next couple of months and years. So um, tonight we have an historic opportunity to support our community in recovering from the social and economic hardships brought on and exacerbated by COVID-19. We have the opportunity to allocate up to $30.5 million to the important measures that have been described by Administrator Dill and which we're all familiar at this point. I want to thank Administrator Dill and his team for working closely with us to operationalize the ideas that we've put forward and have come from the community into allocations that will improve the quality of life for our residents across the entire county. I have an incredible amount of respect for Administrator Dill and for the team who have worked on this in just a really professional and thoughtful way, including allocating the funding in such a way that we're in a very good position to leverage future funding that may come into the county. I also want to thank Commissioner Hodge and our board operations and communications manager, Peter Lindemann, who have been with me every step of the way from designing a community engagement strategy to ensuring that the details of each allocation made sense and working tirelessly with administration to keep everything on track. And thank you also to Commissioner Labar for spearheading the childcare allocation and to Commissioners Machieski and Beeman, who have worked tirelessly on the broadband access for the entire county. And thank you to each and every commissioner for your input. You've worked on ideas, reached out to constituents and administration, held town halls, and brought your experience to service our residents. And, and, you, and then I also want to thank the residents who have given their time to give feedback, give input, and bring ideas to us. And so I just wanna say it's really, really exciting to be able to take this vote tonight. This resolution is a package that addresses several concerns concurrently. I want to emphasize that the allocations coming to a vote tonight come because 
they are important and they are also ready to operationalize, not because they're necessarily more important than the other concerns that we will be addressing in the months ahead. In the end, we are all human and allocating $71.5 million takes a lot of time and a lot of thought. Tonight, we are going to allocate up to $2 million to equitably address childcare needs across the county. This addresses an immediate need that many families and employers face. We're also going to, I hope, allocate money to children's savings accounts. Within four years, every public school student will have a 529 account in their name. The data shows that this account can change lives, increasing high school graduation, college and training school attendance, and increasing constructive parenting. This measure is a major step toward creating a strong culture of generational success for every family in this county and one of the accomplishments of which I will forever be most proud. I don't think most people know that my grandmother actually had to quit high school because her mother had died and she was forced to help support the family. I can only imagine what some of the measures that we are going to be taking tonight and in the months ahead would have made to her life. And I believe that we can, as a county board, do so many things to encourage generational success in our county and let every single child in this county know that we believe in them and their ability to have a life full of their own choices that they control. We will also be expanding broadband infrastructure with this allocation to make sure that every single family in our county has access to high-speed internet. This is the culmination really of a 20-year effort to provide high-speed internet access countywide. And it is really, really exciting. We're also looking at allocating money to make sure that every family can afford the access to the physical infrastructure that will be provided. So there, will, there should be no excuse for anybody not to have access to high-speed internet, and we will, we're gonna stay involved. We'll also be expanding weatherization services. This measure will increase the health, comfort, and safety of families while reducing their power bills and carbon emissions. This is very, very important. We will also be accounting for lost revenues. Our administrative team is full of accounting rock stars, and their work, Will, will result in us recouping money that was lost due to COVID. So in sum, I just wanna say thank you everybody for your work on this. I know that I can't thank you enough and um, we're gonna continue to be working on this. So please um, keep, keep those ideas and the input coming. Thank you very much. Thank you, Commissioner Labar. Thanks, Chair. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try and be brief. Um, many of you who know me know that, that generally process is not uh, my favorite thing, uh, but I do think uh, that the process this board designed in particular, our, our chair in terms of shaping and leading um, was, was excellent. Um, and I think uh, any, any process can be improved on, um, but I'm, I'm really proud of this one and, and I'll, uh, I'll strongly uh, defend it and advocate for its uh, for its replication as we as we go forward. Um, and Sue, I know you've put a lot of your time and effort into this, um, and I, I I thank you both in your role as commissioner, but just human being to human being. Um, you know, Greg, you and your team have done uh, the Lord's work in terms of getting to this point. I know there's a lot more work to go. Uh, I know this will not meet every need. I know. I know. Um, there are things that we will not fund that, that many of us wish we could, but I appreciate what you and your team have done. And I especially uh, 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 Peter Lindemann's help in terms of the, the town halls and so forth. Um, just to wrap up uh, my remarks, I really appreciate the aid of you uh, stepping up to bat for uh, some of the kids that are going to need uh, child care options. Uh, in AAPS. It means a hell of a lot to me. And I know I can't speak for, for Katie or, or Jason Morgan, but I, I, I think I know it means a lot to them. And those two, uh, Katie and Jason, have been incredibly helpful on this. Um, and I'm going to, I may not put a smile on her face with this, but I will say this. 
Um, we have a quiet but remarkable talent on our board in Caroline Sanders, who's done a ton of work related to this. And as we as a county allocate this money, we are essentially planting the seed of possibility in terms of if we as an entity want to delve further in to the issue of childcare um, and, and, and want to make that purview. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm really glad we have Carol Ford given her work on this. Um, I can't presume passage, but I, I, I hope it will. And I just wanted to thank the eight of you uh, for your support on this important issue. Um, and Liz Lynn and Lynn Song, uh, for asking me to get involved and so forth. Um, and then, uh, you know, it's easy sometimes for us to get uh, caught up in the issues that we care about. Um, I, I think the eight of you have done a remarkable job in terms of sharing with me why the things that are important to your constituencies and your districts uh, matter to the whole as well. Um, and I've, I've, I've seen a lot of great collective work from this board over the last few months uh, that, that, that speaks uh, to, to those points and to your strengths. Um, and I'm, I'm, as always, proud to be uh, part of this board. Next, next year. Thank you. Mr. Machieski. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, you know, this is, uh, this particular vote is uh, one of the most significant for me in my two and a half years as a county commissioner. Uh, it includes five programmatic initiatives funded by American Rescue Plan funds, at least partially, that are um, impactful. I think the word um, you know, transformational has been used tonight uh, when we talk about access to child care and child savings accounts, weatherization, and uh, the broadband infrastructure and affordability of broadband. These are all very significant steps for us to be taking um, as a county. And I'm proud to have been a part of this process uh, with this county commission. It has definitely been a, um, uh, a process where we have worked and talked and worked through things and come up with a, uh, I think, quite outstanding resolution here this evening. Um, I want to speak specifically in depth about the broadband piece of this. Uh, it has been mentioned a couple of times tonight. This is a long standing issue in our county, um, nearly two decades uh, where this has been talked about. Um, the county commission, uh, two county commissions ago, formed a subcommittee that issued a report in November of 2018 with three goals. The first goal was to achieve 100% broadband equity by the year 2022. That seemed like a outlandish goal at the time that that was put forward. Um, but yet here we are in, in, the, in the precipice of being able to make that commitment. Their second goal was um, to do a digital equity staff position. And quite frankly, the work that it was envisioned for that position has been done by the broadband task force, by people that are volunteering an extraordinary amount of time um, to raise this issue and work towards a solution. And finally, the third goal of that subcommittee was to renew the work of the subcommittee, which we did in early 2019 with the creation of the Broadband Task Force itself, which is comprised of 15 different um, representatives from townships across our county, uh, townships that are suburban, exurban, and rural, uh, representing many thousands of people. Um, you know, unfortunately, our, our internet system was built out um, at the whim of internet service providers by private companies who were putting it where they could economically decide and make profit off of it. And it's left people out. It's left people out to the extent that connecting to that internet infrastructure, just connecting to it, can cost anywhere from $10,000 to upwards of $85,000 for a single household. That is an extraordinary price to access something that what I think is critical uh, in the 21st century. You know, the impacts of unreliable internet service or slow internet service, non-broadband level, um, or just no internet service at all can be measured through 
lack of educational opportunities. And pre-COVID, you know, I would hear from people who um, their kids couldn't do all of their homework because they didn't have access to the internet at home. They couldn't take certain courses at Dexter High School because they didn't have internet access um, to do the work from home. And then with COVID, you know, we saw the impact on education. We now see that work from home and work from community is a standard part of business and work life um, across our country. Commissioner Beeman mentioned the business development aspects of this earlier. Um, there are impacts for telehealth and telemedicine. Included in the documents tonight were um, letters of support from St. Joe Chelsea and St. Joe Ann Arbor Livingston um, supporting this because for those those who are, are familiar with the healthcare space, and there are several of those on this call today, um, the future of healthcare involves telemedicine, telehealth, wellness programs, uh, medical appointments, clinical appointments. It's not something that's going away after the pandemic ends, hopefully. Um, and the way the technology is increasing with medicine will be even more reliant on the ability to get a good internet connection to receive and deliver healthcare. So, with that, we have a broadband task force that tirelessly worked to do a survey. They've conducted endless research. And in the middle of COVID, they came up with an immediate solution for people that couldn't connect to the internet for their kids' homework by working with township and municipal officials to do hotspots across our county. Something that was not part of their initial charge, but that they took up and did um, of their own initiative uh, and made a difference for many, many people. Their work resulted in an understanding of where we're missing broadband internet in our county. It resulted in working with county administration on a request for proposal process to further understand the cost to resolve this issue. And it has really put us in a position to take advantage of Connecting Mission Community Grant Awards and the Rural Development Opportunity Fund. Create an opportunity for us to take an advantage of a funding opportunity that we have now with the American Rescue Plan. Um, and you know, I would like to thank the members of the Broadband Task Force for their work there. They are an example of a, a body that we as a county commission have created that have gone incredibly above and beyond uh, their duties. And they have been led by Barb Fuller and Ben Feynman who spoke earlier tonight. And I wanna thank them and all the members of the task force for their tireless work on this issue. The American Rescue Plan identifies broadband as, as one of the areas um, that's recommended for funding. And I'm happy that we're here tonight to vote on this resolution. Uh, Mr. Feynman noted earlier that we are at the front of the line to get this done, to take advantage of what are limited resources to build out the infrastructure of the internet in our county. Um, we need, there's an urgency to do this um, and to move forward. And I'm thankful for those who've been involved and those who've been involved in the discussion to get us to that point. Um, a note of, and just a note, however, that um, by approving this, we're hopefully lining up with that Rural Development Opportunity Fund and the Connecting Michigan Communities Grant so that we can bring all of these in line together, but it's not gonna happen overnight. Um, these things, unfortunately, will take several years to bring to fruition, to run all of the fiber lines, to get the work done and to connect everyone in the community. So it's, it's not gonna happen overnight. Um, I wanna thank the staff that worked on this, um, diligently uh, over the, especially over the past couple of months as we've been crafting this resolution, Administrator Dill, uh, Diane Height, uh, Andrew DeLue, Peter Lindemann, um, Elise Barry Payne, uh, they have all had significant contributions to this process in, in getting here tonight. Um, and finally, for all of the people <clears throat> that I have talked to over the last three years, about their struggles with the internet, the disabled people who need the internet to get to doctor's appointments, the kids who, who just wanna access their classrooms. Um, this is a, a, a monumental thing. And as an elected official, we're, we have to deal with the issues that we are presented and the times that we have to deal with. And uh, you know, I am, I'm proud to be part of a process and to be part of a county commission that is dealing with not only the broadband issue, but the other four programmatic issues in this as well. So I look forward to voting on it tonight 
and uh, encourage uh, my colleagues to do so. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Beeman, you're up. Thank you, Chair. Uh, I also uh, echo all of, of Jason's sentiments. Um, and this is just a, a monumental package that we are presented with. And I would just like to take a moment and reflect on how we are truly impacting the future of Washtenaw County um, from our families to our children to generations to come. We are impacting them with what we've brought forward tonight from savings accounts to child care. Um, it's, it's outstanding um, how we're touching every resident of Washtenaw County uh, with what we're bringing forward right now. Um, I, I have no words for the dedication of the broadband task force. I just don't. They are a force of nature. Um, they have been so dedicated um, and pushed through uh, even our survey right before COVID came. Uh, and we had this information to be able to, to move forward. And it's just outstanding the way that these groups of individuals can come together and work together on an issue. Um, in my previous jobs in economic development, it was difficult to get these uh, different entities to, to work together um, when you're crossing different boundaries and township lines and all of those things. And that was never once um, an issue with this group. Everyone was here to pull together the, the the same rope um, of getting access to broadband for every resident of Washtenaw County. And I am just so excited and overwhelmed um, with the opportunity to bring this forward. Um, there, there is a piece that's, that's been pulled forward and it's looking at you know, access in terms of who is low opportunity and, and who has high opportunity. And I would like to address that there are townships that were going to be impacted by this Augusta, Manchester, Northfield, and Ypsilanti um, that, that meet that threshold. And I don't want anyone left behind. I, no one should not have access uh, to the internet. Let me rephrase that. Everyone should have access to, to the internet, um, regardless of, of where you live. And the truth be told, these are the homes that are left. We've done amazing work. The grants that the Broadband Task Force has brought forward is outstanding. And the homes that are already impacted and already touched by their work is just phenomenal. And we're closing that gap. We're closing what's left um, with this funding. And I'm just so appreciative of the educational opportunities and the telemedicine opportunities and the economic development opportunities and the opportunities for my farmers to be able to use better technology to continue to feed us uh, here locally is just outstanding. Um, and so thank you uh, everyone for all of your work, uh, chair, board, leadership, everyone. Um, just thank you so much. Thank you. Mr. Morgan. Thank you, Chair. I'll be very brief um, because I, I shared many of my comments uh, earlier here, but uh, just want to share several thank yous as well. Thank you. In, just thank you immensely to Chair Shank for uh, having a process. I, uh, Commissioner Labar said it very elegantly. Um, I am somebody who loves process and loves community engagement, and I am incredibly happy that we were able to do that already. Uh, and that we'll be able to continue doing that. And I am so incredibly thankful that we have Peter uh, on our staff to help us with this. I just cannot imagine uh, what we would have done if we didn't have Peter helping us uh, to make all of this work. Um, I say that because there have been times when this board has gone without a staff person and I cannot reiterate strongly enough that we should always have somebody helping us as a board so that when things come up, we're able to engage the community and do things effectively. 
um, but he is a lifesaver. And, and I just think it, it means so much that we've been able to engage with residents in a, a truly meaningful way and will continue to do so. Um, thank you to Administrator Dill, uh, Andrew and Diane, who uh, certainly work quietly behind the scenes, I know, um, to really package all this together in a way that um, truly does reflect um, all of the priorities that we've had that we're ready to go now. And I'm sure you will continue working on the things that we have continuing um, to come before us uh, over the next couple of months here. But uh, just thank you incredibly, um, just incredible thank you to you all for that. Uh, and especially to Barb Fuller, I think Ben has hopped off, but thank you to Barb Fuller, who is tireless and uh, is a volunteer in doing this work and this advocacy. And of course, to Commissioners Beeman and Maciejewski, um, but uh, especially to Barb, who is, uh, as I think Commissioner Beeman said, uh, I'd say the task force certainly is a force, but Barb herself has been a force driving this as well for many years. Um, several of us were, were on the board uh, however many years ago it was that Commissioner Maciejewski mentioned uh, when we first created the task force and we started gathering data and we've been supporting that work that Barb has been leading with us all. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, the last thing I just want to note um, is I, I think just listening to everybody has kind of made me very choked up here about uh, just what an impact this is going to have, what we're doing is going to have. It's not just a, a vote that we're taking or a, a budget item that we're approving. These things are really going to impact people's lives, and we get to be a part of that. And so that is something that just means so much, uh, and I'm so honored to be part of this board to be able to vote for this at this time. Uh, and the last thing I want to know is just I hope that we'll also remember to thank Congresswoman Dingle, Senator Peters, Senator Stabenow. At some point, we uh, work with them. Uh, they were incredibly instrumental in passing this. We will remember that the, we have this American Rescue Plan um, because the uh, leadership of the House and the Senate and President Biden um, supported this uh, legislation. And uh, these things shouldn't be partisan, but unfortunately, that vote was uh, a, a, an absolute partisan split. Um, but I think what we're going to see in the community is that there's a bipartisan impact of this really positive funding source that we are able to implement here in our community, uh, working with our community members. So thank you all very much. Thank you, Chair. Commissioner Jefferson. Thank you, Chair. Yes, thank you, uh, Commissioner Morgan. It's definitely a, a bipartisan impact. I appreciate that comment. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to, uh, first let me start with the broadband task force uh, when, when we decided to do that. The work that they did uh, was so outstanding and uh, how they reached out and did surveys and those types of things. And I'm not sure who did it, but I'm pretty sure Barb Fuller is the one that's responsible for sending me a cup that says, fix the damn internet. <laughs> which was, I thought was, there it is, was, was kind of amusing, but seriously, we need to fix the, internet, the damn internet. And I appreciate uh, her tenacity to continue to fight for that for as long as she has. And the uh, things that we've uh, decided to put on uh, our list for the ARP funding allocations, we remember we still have to make the, uh, with the administration, come back with us on how those things will operate and, and then things like that. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's a historic moment for all of us on this uh, board. I mean, uh, the impact that it's going to make is just tremendous. I appreciate the fact that there's some homes in Ypsilanti Township that will be uh, getting this access that they've never had. And I also appreciate the, uh, the money that's set aside for affordability. Uh, because I know that those who are uh, having access to uh, uh, internet services as a discount from uh, networks are not getting the, the speed that they need. And so hopefully we can help get them to the greater speed that they need with this money we set aside. And as Commissioner Scott said earlier, I do believe that is going to take more than just what we have here right now. But I'm glad that we have started that. Uh, the weatherization is, is a call that I get a lot from people in the community that uh, really need 
you know, roof help and uh, water heaters and, and all these type of things, furnace help. And so hopefully we can be more uh, uh, helpful with them being become more energy efficient in their homes. And then the child care is something that, you know, I've, I think since 2017, uh, something that I've always been looking at. Commissioner Labar has talked to me about it, and so has Commissioner Sanders, and one instance in the Ypsilanti area. But it definitely needs to be, uh, since COVID, uh, looked at and how we can help all throughout the county. You know, our, our children are, 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 you know, our best uh, asset, I believe, as far as this county being a place where we have innovators and creative thinkers such as we have uh, with the eight of you who have been uh, doing this work for this ARP money, our, our administration, including uh, uh, a county administrative deal and all those who help him come along with the finance department, come along with these, these innovative ideas. I mean, some communities have hired companies outside of uh, their organizations to help them navigate on how to do these dollars. But I think we did a great job by keeping it in-house and using our, uh, our communications and operations manager, Peter Linderman, to help us connect to the community through town halls. Uh, what a great job. All I had to do was click on and click off. Thanks, Peter. Appreciate that. And the input that we were given is not, uh, you know, taken for granted. And we still have some more allocations to deal with those ideas that we got from those town halls. I really appreciate that. And so uh, we're going to, uh, from this point on, you know, make a decision that's, you know, like I said, historical and glad to be a part of it. It's, it's unfortunate that COVID-19 had to hit us, but I, I always believe that no matter what happens, there's always something positive that can come out of it. And I thank all of you for, for fighting for uh, these issues and these items on this uh, list today. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Commissioner Scott. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanna note that uh, I think that this is the first step that we're taking tonight to help make the county a better place. And I'm really hopeful that we can continue to move forward and continue to do this in the iterative process that we've been using to address the real material and um, the real material needs of those who live and work here in Washtenaw County. There's not one item on this list that I'm not excited about. I'm excited about every single one of them. And I now uh, I think that we have another job that starts here uh, colleagues, and that it, it behooves us now to make sure these programs that we're creating um, are used to create the equity we so desire by getting people enrolled in these programs, involved in these programs, that we're making sure people are taking advantage of the weatherization programs, the money that we're having there, that we get kids into these child savings accounts, that this work, just because we have allocated money or we're hopefully voting to allocate some of this money this first step tonight it doesn't mean that the work is over the work is really just beginning um i also want to encourage us to think more about affordability on many different levels um you know i did talk about affordability with the internet but there's all sorts of areas where we can think about using these dollars and leveraging these dollars to create affordability in different areas of people's lives whether that's childcare, whether that's the internet, whether that's healthcare. Um, we also might think about how we leverage these dollars uh, in infrastructure with the private companies who will also benefit from the work that we're saying to do. I wanna be sure that we continue to put working families at the forefront of all of our decisions. Uh, these dollars, um, we need to think about how we're going to continue to use the ARP funding, knowing that the, the pandemic is, is ongoing. This is not done. Uh, I know a lot of, there was a lot of glee this summer, I think, when people thought, I kept hearing people say, the pan, now the pandemic is over. The pandemic is very much ongoing. 
and we are on the precipice of a fourth and uh, wave that promises to be larger than all of the waves that we've had so far. And the financial toll in our community is uh, mirrored only by the mental health and physical health toll it's taking. So please, let's not forget that the pandemic is far from over as we continue to think about the next dollars that we're spending. Also, I want to note that I think that there's countless people to thank um, from other politicians to county admin and of course my colleagues that have spoken already have done this, but I really want to thank the people that have come out to our meetings. Um, that have commented in public forum, that have taken the time to send us thoughtful emails with well thought out plans and opinions. Please, please, please keep doing this. Uh, you are who we are working for and it's you we have to thank. Uh, so with that, I'll wrap up my comments. I know we still have a whole nother meeting to go to. So thank you very much, Chair. Thank you. Commissioner Sanders, you're up. I feel like Commissioner Scott just cut me at the leg, so I'm gonna I'm gonna make this short. <laughs> um, I I just want to echo that I am so appreciative of the administrative staff as a whole, um, for Peter, um, and specifically for helping me. I think with an individual struggle that I had of trying to reach out to my constituents. So the um, newsletter, the town halls were greatly appreciated and an indication that this is something that we can continue to do, maybe not as regularly, but in terms of being able to communicate more broadly with our constituents and, and having them be able to communicate with us as well. Um, I am excited to be able to utilize this, uh, this windfall or this gift that we have received in terms of a a rebate from our taxes, whether it's county, federal, or whatever, through the American Rescue um, Plan to help the most vulnerable residents of our county. So I'm going to just put it out there. Um, my goal is to help the most vulnerable first, and those that are able to take care of ourselves, we can take care of ourselves until um, we need something uh, that we are not able to handle for ourselves. So. I would like to see us continue to do that as we agree upon the allocation of this funding and, and other resources. And just to make sure that our constituents know that we are listening to them, that their voices matter, but also that we're not the only pot and we need to be looking at multiple pots in order to make sure everyone is, is carrying their share. Um, and the, the county is the biggest, I think, but we need to be clear uh, that there are other resources that we need to be reaching out to, um, requesting, requiring, demanding on behalf of our residents. So I just want to say thank you all. Um, this has been a ride as a eight month, nine month freshman into this job. I don't think I've slept yet. But uh, so far I'm learning and I'm, I'm not ready to quit you guys yet, but thank you so much. And thank you to all of our residents for hearing us when we said we really wanted to hear from them. So thank you. Thank you. Do we have any commissioners that wanted a second round of comments before I wrap us up? Don't be shy now, you know, this is the, it's the big one. Not seeing any, okay. Uh, well, I would wrap us up by saying I wanna thank uh, everyone that's already been thanked from our residents uh, to county admin to the eight other commissioners, um, our staff. This has been a, a very long process for the people that are watching this meeting. Uh, it's not like a big package like this or any of our agenda items come up after a week of thought or discussion. Uh, months of months of effort have gone into this package that we're about to vote on. Uh, and that is typically the case for any of the major decisions that we make. Uh, and as we think about the upcoming packages that we will vote on, uh, we're currently engaged in those conversations. We're gonna be engaged in those conversations uh, for some time now. So please continue to reach out to us, engage with your commissioners, uh, engage with your other local elected officials because they're gonna be going through a process too to think about what, what do they do with their 
um, American Rescue Plan funds. The truly awesome responsibility to effectively steward these funds uh, is something that I know all of the commissioners take very seriously. I know Administrator Bill takes it very seriously. All of us are working really hard to support the success um, of our county and of our residents. Uh, when I think about the Children's Savings Account Program, for example, that is one of the tools that we're looking to use to encourage generational success and disrupt uh, generational poverty in our community. Uh, and we have many more initiatives like that to come uh, over the months as we work on the 2.0 and 3.0 of the Washington Rescue Plan packages. Uh, so I want to thank everybody. And Robert, let's let's do it. Commissioner Machieski. Yes. Commissioner Morgan. Yes. Commissioner Scott. Yes. Commissioner Schink. Yes. Commissioner Sanders. Yes. Commissioner Hodge. Yes. Commissioner Beeman. Yes. Commissioner Jefferson. Yes. Commissioner LeVar. Yes. Item passed. All right, thank you. All right, we, uh, yes, uh, applaud. I guess everybody does a good job. Chris the sky is applauding over there. Uh, you know, if we weren't in a pandemic, I would imagine if we were in person, this would probably people would be hugging and everything else. I wouldn't know since I haven't had an in-person meeting yet. Hopefully someday. Chair, uh, Chair Hodge, can I ask a quick question, not on this item? Oh, please, please. Um, it's been a long night, so uh, I am getting old. On item D1, Jeffrey, hiring of Jeffrey uh, Rose, I know there was no debate, but we voted on that, right? Yeah, we voted on it. Okay, just double checking. Yep. Thank you. You're welcome. Yep. A lot of voting today. Yes. Some may call it a voterama. All right, uh, let's see. Now we're on to G, administration. Thank you. Commissioners, uh, I'll be brief in my comments, just uh, I'll turn it over to Tina. Uh, we have two items for you tonight. We have the 2021 budget amendment and also have the second quarter update. There's a comprehensive presentation. Uh, so I leave it to you all to decide how quickly we move through that information. It certainly is important information. I also think it illuminates all the good work that our organization has done, the stewarding of resources in a way uh, that maximize, maximizes outcomes. I'm just really, really grateful to the organization for all the work that we do. So with that, I'll turn it over to Tina and ask her to, to move us through her presentations. Uh, Tina, you are muted. <laughs> it has been a long night. I apologize. <laughs> So I will start again. Um, I'll first go over the 2021 general fund budget adjustment and non-general fund budget adjustments. I will be brief. Um, so please, if you have questions after I'm done, um, let me know. But the main component is the general fund will increase $1.3 million. There's two revenue components to that um, with regard to intergovernmental revenues for personal property tax reimbursement, the CARES, um, public safety, public health payroll reimbursement program that was a residual leftover from last year. So we booked an accrual to the prior year based on information at that time. The actual payment or final payment settlement was a little bit higher. So this is just recognizing that revenue um, as well. And then the second um, a, a part of it is increasing surplus property or other revenue and reimbursements category for the sale of Platte Road. So what that will do on the expenditure side is tag the um, intergovernmental revenues for increased COVID response that I will go over a little bit more detail in the presentation for your update. And then um, we'll also uh, uh, increase transfers out because when you have surplus property um, for capital items such as a, build, a sale of land, um, what happens is that goes to a capital fund for reinvestment for capital purposes. In this case, it would go to capital reserves. So that's the general fund component. There are some non-general fund components with regard to um, increasing and they're non-structural in um, 
in nature, increasing the Sheriff's Office 911 state fund for um, spending of technology reserves for the Metro dispatch um, move. And so it's specifically for, it has to be spent on specific purposes. So it's for uh, technology needs for that move. Then there's also a facilities replacement fund increase of about 147,000. And that's again, just for facility projects and the use of fund balance within that fund for that specific purpose. Then there's a non-structural increase for IT replacements in the amount of 215,000. Again, use of fund balance for specific technology um, improvement projects. And then the final piece is nominal. It is a structural increase to the Sheriff's Office Community Engagement Fund in the amount of $36,000. Um, that would take care of the budget adjustment item if you have any questions. No? Questions, anybody? Don't be shy. <laughs> no? Okay. Oh, uh, Commissioner Jefferson. No, no question. Just, just wanted to acknowledge the... Uh, 36,000 in the sheriff's budget as a, a real good uh, item because it's what I'm hearing is going to help with the outreach in the community uh, to areas that, uh, you know, people are experiencing crime and our youth uh, will be reached out to. So I wanted to thank you for that increase. Thank you. So I'm not sure, do you want to take your vote now before I do the second quarter budget update? If there are no other, yes, if there are no other questions or comments, let's do that vote, Robert. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Item pass. Yeah, thank you, Robert, for rotating the, the calls. You know, it keeps us on our toes, so it's always good to, you know, rotate those. So thank you for doing that. So since I now have the floor, I just want to take a brief moment before I do the um, second quarter budget update to introduce you to my um, replacement. So remember, um, Kelly retired, my, my predecessor partner in crime. I miss her every day. So as I enter my second month without her solo, um, we did do a hiring process for the finance budget operations director position. And we promoted Catherine um, Joan Miller, and she has worked for the county for 14 years. She started as an intern and she's worked her way up through multiple positions. The most recently recent before her promotion was finance ERP system and special projects administrator. And Catherine holds a master's degree in public policy from University of Michigan. So I just want to congratulate her on her promotion and introduce her to you and you can put a face to the name. And I don't know, no pressure if she wants to say anything or not. <laughs> want to say anything? Hey, Catherine. Hi, I'll just say hi so you can see my face and I look forward to working with all of you. Well, congratulations and welcome to the team. Thank you. I mean, you were already on the team, but now you're on the team in another way, so, hey. All right, so let me um, share my screen. Are you seeing the presentation? I see a black screen with the mouse on it, but I did see the presentation a moment ago. Oh, it's there, boom, I got it. All right, let me, I need to, I need to just minimize the, the people just so I can find my way. Okay, without further ado, um, the agenda is the same that it's been in the past. Um, so I won't, um, I will brief over the standard items for the agenda and get into the nitty gritty details due to the late hour. Um, so basically just kind of want to recap um, the general fund budget adjustments that have been authorized by the Board of Commissioners to date. So in June, there was uh, two structural components and a non-structural adjustment. Primarily the structural component was to recognize the property tax um, revenue increase due to the equalization report, as well as some um, state revenues um, that were tagged for specific purposes um, 
in respect to personnel services for part of this uh, property tax increase, as well as um, putting the remaining amount in the undesignated allocation until a recommendation can be framed from the administrator within uh, policy guidelines. Um, the second structural component was the revenue, I mean, the state revenues that specifically were for um, recreational marijuana, which went, it was identified and tagged for equity um, expansion, as well as the undesignated allocation for the non-structural component of the marijuana, marijuana dollars. Also pursuant to policy, this is the second quarter that we have provided the budget adjustment um, within administrative authority between 25,000 and 100,000. The full report is in your packet um, as well, but this was a screenshot of there was two items that um, were uh, within administrative authority. Um, so I just wanted to make sure that that was highlighted once again, since it's a relatively new item that is before you in your packet. So shifting to general fund revenues, the clerk register of deeds currently has a projected surplus of about 1.1 million due to real estate transfer tax and recording fee receipts. Um, the first half of 2020 revenues, 2021 revenues are trending about 1 million more than the first half of 2020 activity. So that is good news with regard to the housing um, market and the economy in general, considering what we've been living through the last 18, 19 months. The general um, government net surplus of about 288,000, primarily for water resources commissioners and support services activities. Prosecuting attorney has a surplus of about 144,000 due to state revenue reimbursements for the crime victim rights program. And then shifting to the revenue, uh, new shortfalls, trial court has a projected shortfall of 409,000. This pretty much aligns with the prior year revenue shortfall due to reduced court activities and um, court equity payments. The trial court has a projected expenditure surplus of about 577,000 that will offset um, the projected revenue shortfall. So remember, because the courts have a lump sum budget agreement, we do um, present their information uh, collectively, both revenues and expenditures, so you know that um, are informed of the net impact. District court has a projected shortfall of about 892,000. Again, this is also in alignment with the prior year revenue shortfall, and it's due to this, a similar situation as trial court reduced court activities, fees and services, fines and forfeitures. Um, district court has a projected expenditure surplus that will offset only a portion of the projected revenue shortfall. The net district court projected revenue shortfall is approximately 565,000. Um, right now, caseload for um, district court is projected to be around 36,000, which um, is uh, higher than the um, caseload for 2020. So there is improvements, but still court activities and hearings actually being held are uh, you know, not at the levels of pre-pandemic um, situation. Sheriff's Office projected shortfall of 1.5 million. million. Um, it's projected to be about 300,000 higher than the actual revenue shortfall for fiscal year 2020. And this is due primarily to share of services revenue um, for significant reductions in special event overtime reimbursements through um, the second quarter, and then civil division um, revenues. The sheriff's office has projected expenditure surplus of about 1.6 million that will offset the projected revenue shortfall. So the net sheriff departmental expenditure surplus is approximately 94,000. And then finally, the current adopted 2021 budget through June 30th included the planned use of fund balance. And because the planned use of fund balance is a budgeted figure and no actual amounts are posted to the general ledger, budget of revenue shortfall is currently 1.6 million. So when you put the bullets to a uh, grid for the net impact on revenues, um, when you net surpluses to shortfalls, total projected revenue shortfall is just under 2.9 million. 
shifting over to the general fund expenditure areas. Um, you know, I would like just to reiterate, and we've said it each quarterly report since the beginning of 2020, that the pandemic continues to have an impact on county operations. So surpluses include omitting district court, trial court, and the sheriff's office, the county's COVID-19 response expenses within general fund for all other departments combined have a net budget surplus of 4.2 million within personnel services. This is primarily due to the budgeted allocations for the implementation of the compensation study and then administrator planned initiatives for reorganizations. Attrition is a part of it as well for position vacancies and a nominal operating surplus. Central charges and reserves projected surplus of 3 million due to lower than budgeted tax refund overpayments. The undesignated allocation um, and then um, and then uh, the board specific priority a budget allocation, as well as um, small amounts of the undesignated allocation were allocated, um, but not anything major. So there is still a portion of that undesignated allocation available as well. Sheriff's Office projected surplus of 1.6 million as a result of the attrition and position vacancies. Um, and this is ongoing from year to year. And remember, as I stated on the revenue side that their expenditure surplus covers their revenue shortfall. So for a net revenue surplus, I mean, net expenditure surplus, sorry. Trial court is projected surplus of 578,000, primarily due to attrition and vacancies that fully offsets their projected revenue shortfall. Again, same thing with district court that I stated on the revenue side, projected surplus of 327,000 on the expenditure side, um, but their revenue shortfall is much higher than the expenditure surplus. Shifting over to the general fund expenditure shortfalls. So, the um, county's required emergency response to COVID is impacting operations and financials. Um, the projected shortfall is currently 1.6 million for worst case um, for fiscal year 2021 due to our required response. So of this amount, about 100,000 is for eligible expenditures submitted in this current year for our project application one that started in fiscal year 2020. The remaining projected over expenditure of 1.5 million is for anticipated costs for the health department continuing COVID vaccination and testing activities. So with that said, that remember this is based on the first six months of the year. There has been some changes to um, how health department is administering um, COVID response and vaccination and testing efforts. So this may change a little drastically when, um, somewhat drastically when you do get your third quarter budget updated um, because late breaking information um, prior to the presentation is um, as health department was working through their budget modification that you adopted earlier this evening as well as their new year is that there's been an infusion of COVID funding from the state that will likely improve this worst case scenario in this, in this, um, on this bullet. But again, that will be worked through and presented with an update uh, during the third quarter. <clears throat> and then um, when you put the bullets, mounts to the bullets, uh, talked about on the previous slide, the total projected net general fund expenditure surplus is just over 8 million. On this slide, the intent is to link the account, care, account category variances to the specific bullets by department and organization already highlighted. Um, the revenue categories most impacted across the county with shortfalls are the fees and services, um, fines and forfeitures, and other revenues. And that primarily has to do with the sheriff's office, the courts, and the planned use of fund balance. The expenditure categories reveal that personnel services savings um, which the largest areas is for the sheriff's office, as well as the implementation um, allocation for the compensation study. And then the courts results in a surplus that offsets operational over expenditures across the county and supplies other services and charges, internal service charges and capital outlay for increased expenses to our, um, as a result of our um, emergency response to the pandemic. 
To summarize this slide, the to total projected revenues exceed total projected expenditure for a projected surplus of 5.2 million. And that's here down here at the bottom. Always like to present you with a what the revised budget is currently, the first quarter projected um, uh, statements um, during the budget update back in May, June, and then the second quarter projected as of based on the information that is being presented tonight. Um, always like to remind the board the structural versus the non-structural investments are driven by policy and where that stands currently. Um, here's the current quadrennial recommended budget as of June 30th. And remember, we have a budget reaffirmation that we are in the process of preparing. Um, but for the most part, the 2021 through 2024 budgets are balanced and there are budgeted reserves and contingencies. Um, but other than that, you will get updated reaffirmation of figures with regard to personnel services, cost allocation plan, fleet services, and then um, any other additional recommendations from the administrator that will be presented the first um, meeting in October. The status of the non-general fund programs, um, all as of through June 30th, and some of that is um, uh, some of the funds that say 930 year end are nine months of data, not just six months of data. So keep that in mind. So there's more data that determines the bill. I mean, it has the ability to determine what the status of that fund is. So everything is looking in good shape with, um, with the exception of risk management, but this has to do with um, some settlements that are occurring this year. Um, but, and there is plenty of fund balance to cover anything, any overage that we would go as a result of um, the claims process and the settlement process. The revenue items to monitor are the same items you've seen the last couple quarterly updates. So I won't uh, go in depth there unless you have questions or after I'm done. Expenditures, same thing, similar items. These are the high ticket items um, that we continue to monitor on a regular basis and uh, know that we will be responsive to the economy and the sustainability of some of the funding levels. And then just summary and next steps as you continue your community engagement for the ARPA funds. And then the administrator is engaging um, by community of interest to, with elected officials and departments. Budget updates, next one would be third quarter in November and then year end preliminary March, April. And then again, as a reminder, as I stated, we will have a quadrennial budget reaffirmation um, ready to go uh, first meeting in October. And that's the timeline with the hopes of uh, adoption last meeting in November or into December at your leisure. That is my presentation. Um, I'm trying to get the screen back, so bear with me a minute. <laughs> oh, there's a big red button that says stop sharing. So did I stop sharing my screen? Yes, you did. Uh, so before I open it up for questions, I want to thank you for the presentation, very comprehensive. Uh, I also wanted to point out that I think in our enthusiasm uh, in passing round one of the rescue plan, we did not vote on G1. We voted on G2, but not G1. So we would need to vote on G1 at some point. Uh, but I'll go ahead and allow for questions at this point, And then after that, we'll vote on G1. I see Curtis nodding. He's like, yeah. And I think, you know, if we were a person, you would have whispered something to me, but, you know, we don't have that luxury. Okay. Uh, questions, comments, friends? Commissioner Scott. Not a question. I just want to tell Tina, thank you for, like, I appreciate your well prepared and succinct presentations to us. And I know it's hard to, be at the end of a long meeting and do that presentation. And it, I just want to just make a note that I appreciate your organization and, and the way you present that to us every time. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Yes, you're welcome. All right, uh, what else we got? 
Anybody? Nope. Okay. Uh, Robert, I want us to vote on G1 now. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Commissioner Sanders? I said yes. Did you hear me? No, you were muted, but, but oh. we hear it now. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Item passed. Excellent. Thank you. We're up to date now. We're smooth sailing. Okay, good. All right. Well, thank you for that uh, budget update. You have anything else for us in the report of the administrator? Chair, that will conclude my report. Thank you all. Thank you. All right, we're going to move it on to report of the chair of the board, Commissioner Schink. Thank you, Chair. I think that given how much we've talked about uh, the American Rescue Plan and the lateness of the hour that I just want to leave it at. I'm really excited about the vote that we took tonight. Thank you, everybody, for your work. I, want to, I do want to recognize that the reason this is happening is because of the hard work of our uh, Congresswoman Debbie Dingell and our senators and President Joe Biden. And I, um, I just, I'm so excited. I wish I could run around and, you know, high five everybody, but um, can't because COVID's too prevalent in our community. And so I want to remind everybody who, if, if anybody's still left on the meeting to wear your mask and stay safe. And if you're not vaccinated, run right out and do that as soon as possible, because our health department is making it super easy for people to do that. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. I'm going to move on to chair or report of the chair of ways and means which is me. Uh, you know, we're, we've already had a lot to talk about today. I'm just going to thank everybody again for your patience in this meeting and for everyone's attendance. It's great to see that we still have 14 attendees and some unknown number that are streaming it through the website. Uh, we're going to keep on working. We're going to keep on pushing on these, these next packages. Moving on to items for current and future discussion. We have none. Unless anybody would like to raise one. Oh, Commissioner Labar, I see you. Thanks, Chair. Just as a, a point of personal privilege, I made a mistake earlier tonight in not responding uh, during Commissioner follow-up. I had promised my son, Declan, who will be uh, nine next week, that I would share with all of you, he has an idea to build um, a small robotic shark to help clean up the Huron River. And rather than forcing me to ask Greg and Evan Pratt about the RFP process, our, our agreement was that I would mention it at our next meeting. Um, and so I will foster his love uh, for science and his interest in uh, contracting. Uh, but I wanted to share that in honor of my work. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. It sounds like a tremendous idea and one that definitely qualifies for American Rescue Plan funds. Um, I don't know about that, but it's a good idea. Commissioner Scott. I can't even follow that. That's, I want to just make it happen. I love this idea. But my uh, uh, topic for future discussion stems from the Huron River. Um, I know this week we heard about another accident on M14. I am um, sort of been thinking about this. I know I brought it to this iteration of the board and to last term's board that this continues to be discussed. I'm wondering if we might create some sort of joint working group with the city on how we might lobby uh, to look for changes for this M14 interchange at Main Street and Barton. And I'm happy to try to um, head that up. And if it seems like that's a good idea to the, to the board, uh, I'll work with Administrator Dillon trying to create some type of working group about what we can do to, to fix that part of our city. It's not only dangerous for the people who are driving there in cars and always a semi, but the Huron River located right beneath that. So thanks. Yeah, thank you. So do we want this to be added to our pending items going forward? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, let's do it. Let's pend it. Let's pen, it's pended. Okay, we're gonna pin this. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Trying to see it, we got other hands. Oh, Commissioner Shink, sorry, you moved around squares. Yeah, I just wanna thank Commissioner Scott for that. It's, it's a huge issue. 
You are thanked, Commissioner Scott. Okay. Uh, any others? I, I'm not thinking. I'm not seeing any. Okay, and we have. Oh, Commissioner Scott, you got another I, one. I was going to make a motion to adjourn. Oh, I have to say, there's no pending items. Then go ahead and do it. There's no. We have no pending items. Yeah, you I don't would, actually have to say that a motion to adjourn is always in order and non-debatable, but yeah. Uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. You're Robert's rules. You are good at those Robert's rules. Okay. You got a second. Motion to adjourn. Okay. okay. So we're going to take a five minute break. So for our viewers at home, uh, we have a second meeting that immediately follows this one uh, after a five minute break. So come on back at, round it up, 9.56, go to the bathroom. Five minutes, just five minutes, Justin. Okay. If people just say five minutes. Do we need? Do we need to? If you seven? take too long, we might fall asleep in between. Well, that wouldn't be just, good. Let's stretch it out to six and a half. I, I, you know, how about we just come back at even ten o'clock? How about that? Oh God! Ten o'clock. Go to the bathroom. Have some right. time. Do your thing. Ten o'clock. We're gonna come back at ten o'clock. Can't decide if I should go inside. I'm really enjoying being outside. I know it's been interesting watching just the day change on your screen. It was like, it was, you know, daytime when this meeting started and now it's just dark. Katie, how are you not getting eaten alive by mosquitoes? Uh, it's called insect repellent, Andy. <laughs> hey, deep woods at off and- That's uh, what I got. Deep. I got a little beat. I'm not taking any chances. Okay. Yes, it is so soft. Yes. Does it every time. I, I'm not taking any chances. When I heard Triple E was back, I was like, the deep is coming out. So, Commissioner Scott, it was nice that every time you spoke, you could hear crickets in the background. <laughs> They're loud here. <laughs> I just don't know if I want to go inside. Yeah, was that the insect or somebody snoring? <laughs> no, it's, it's insects. No, it's just me. It's just me on my porch. That's it. All right, I'm going to use the loop. Be back.
I'm ready for a meeting. I think I'm the first one back. <laughs> so am I. <laughs> there everybody is. I was just trying to get everybody moving. Uh... <laughs> you got us back. <laughs> I will say it is very nice when we have meetings this late at night to be uh, at home so you can, you know, run downstairs and grab some food or whatever. Yeah. No, I miss the peanut butter crackers and potato chips. <laughs> <laughs> Someday, Caroline and I will have those peanut butter crackers. Hey, are we all back yet? It's getting late. Let me see if I can still count. Okay. I think we are. Okay, so I will call the Board of Commissioners meeting to order, please. Uh, we'll start with roll call. Commissioner Beeman. Present attending remotely from the village of Manchester, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Jefferson. Present attending remotely from the township of Ypsilanti, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Labar. Present attending remotely from the city of Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Machieski. Present attending remotely from Dexter Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Morgan. Present, attending remotely from the city of Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Scott. Present, attending remotely from the city of Ann Arbor, Washtenaw County, in the great state of Michigan. Commissioner Schink. Present, attending remotely from Northfield Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Sanders. Present, attending remotely from Pittsfield Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Commissioner Hodge. President attending remotely from Ipslay Township, Washtenaw County, Michigan. Thank you. We have a quorum. Okay, next then we will say the Pledge of Allegiance. If you could put it up, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, nation under God, indivisible. Liberty, liberty and, and justice, justice for, all. for all. Thank you. Um, so next we have public participation and each person has three minutes to speak if they so wish. And um, please raise your hand or I believe it is press star six if you're on your phone and, and we'll get you hooked up with being able to speak. I believe it's star nine to raise their hand. Star six. I'm sorry. Star nine. Peter, do we have anybody who, who wishes to speak? No comments. Okay. Then we won't have commissioner follow up and we'll move on to liaison reports. Do any commissioners have a liaison report? Okay, then we will move on to a special order of business. Item six, a public hearing on the proposed issuance of qualified 501c3 bonds for loan to Campus Partners One to finance or reimburse the cost of acquisition and improvement for certain public charter 
school facilities within the county. Do I have a motion to open the public hearing? The so move. Do we not need support? Okay, um, to open the hearing, this is a hearing for purposes of meeting the requirements of section 147F of the Internal Revenue Code regarding the possible issuance by the Industrial Development Authority of the County of La Paz, the authority of one or more series of its charter school lease revenue bonds, Campus Partners One Project, series 2021 pursuant to a plan of finance in order to finance costs for a project within yeah. the County of Washington, Michigan in an aggregate principal amount of not to exceed $63 million. Proceeds in the maximum amount of $63 million from the sale of the bonds will be loaned by the authority to Campus Partners One and its affiliates, all single member li limited liability companies and disregarded entities of Campus Partners One, which is referred to as the borrower to be used to finance or reimburse all or a portion of the cost of a project that consists of the acquisition and improvement of certain public charter school facilities for use in their school operations at the locations and in the estimated maximum principal amounts listed below. The funding of any required reserves and the payment of the cost of issuance of the bonds. The borrower will lease the charter school facilities to qualified 501c3 entities or governmental entities. The charter school facilities will be owned by the borrower as the initial legal owner. The proceeds of the bonds will be used to acquire and improve the following charter school facilities in Washtenaw County. East Arbor Charter Academy located at 6885 Merritt Road, Ypsilanti, Michigan in the estimated maximum amount of 14,500,000. Fortis Academy located at 3875 Gulfside Drive, Ypsilanti, Michigan, in the estimated maximum amount of $15 million. South Arbor Charter Academy, located at 8200 Carpenter Road, Ypsilanti, Michigan, in the estimated amount of $17,500,000. And South Point Scholars Charter Academy, located at 10550 Gettys Road, Ypsilanti, Michigan, in the estimated amount of $16 million. Are there any people who wish to speak regarding the bonds or the project? Peter, do we, do we have anybody in the audience who is um, indicating that they'd like to speak on this? Madam Chair, Robert has his hand up. Correct. I believe the public comments are uh, pre-submitted and the clerk will read uh, right. multiple public comments off. But then we do have one public comment uh, afterwards. I will uh, uh, send you that information while Robert reads off the uh, pre-submitted ones. Okay, thank you. Robert, sorry. I, if, thank if you, you Chair. Could read we have received two public comments via our uh, email address, public hearings at washington.org. The first public comment comes from Mark Orvath, and he wrote, Commissioners, we would like to note that the Academy Board has not yet considered a lease proposal upon which the transaction depends and therefore take no position on this proposal. We want the record to be clear that South Point Scholars Charter Academy is not the entity asking for approval of this bond financing. We take our role as public officials seriously and will not make a decision on any potential proposal until we have considered all financial and contractual documentation that permit us to make a decision as to what is in the best interest of the Academy and the community we serve. Thank you, respectfully, South Point Scholars Academy Board of Directors. Our second public comment comes from Marcella Hagui from South Arbor Charter Academy. I am the board of the South Arbor Charter Academy located at 8200 Carpenter Road in Ypsilanti. I am writing to support the adoption by the county commissioners of a resolution approving the issuance in accordance with section 147 F of the Internal Revenue Code of 1986 as amended by the Industrial Development Authority of the County of La Paz, Arizona 
of its revenue bonds in one or more series for the benefit of Campus Partners One, a Michigan nonprofit corporation. The bonds are being issued pursuant to a plan of finance for the portion of the project within this jurisdiction described below in an aggregate principal amount not to exceed $17,500,000 as part of a larger scale multi-state project. Proceeds from the sale of the bonds issued in connection with the multi-state project will be loaned by the authority to CP1 and its affiliates, all single member limited liability companies and disregarded entities of CP1 to be used to finance or reimburse all or a portion of the cost of the project that consists of the acquisition and improvement of approximately 70 public charter school facilities across the country for use in their school operations, along with the funding of any required reserves and the payment of the cost of issuance of the bonds. CP1 and or its affiliates will own the project and will lease the charter school facilities to qualified 501c3 entities or governmental entities. This will reduce rents to the majority of the charter schools being acquired. South Arbor has been in operation since 1999 and currently enrolls 781 students. Currently, South Arbor leases the school facility from a for-profit affiliate of National Heritage Academies. In Washtenaw County, the proceeds of the bonds will be used to acquire South Arbor's facilities. As a result of this financing, South Arbor will lease the school facility from an affiliate of CP1 and will see reduced rent. In addition, the financing will provide access to low-cost, long-term capital, a greater transparency of school costs, greater school board independence and autonomy, local board ownership of school equipment, and increased financial stability. South Arbor will continue to be managed by NHA. The new lease will only be the operate will be the only operational change. For these reasons, I am supporting approval by the county commissioners of the issuance of the bonds for South Arbor. That concludes the public comments received via public hearings at Washington.org. Thank you very much. And then we also have um, a person attending the meeting, Audrey Anderson. Um, Ms. Anderson, I think if you push star nine, sorry, I get those two mixed up. I think it's star nine to speak. That's okay. The device I'm on, I'm able to unmute. Can you hear me? Oh, yes. Thank you. I was, yeah. Oh, okay. It's getting um, late. You know, I do know this, and um, this is the first time I have uh, really hung with you guys. I'm just going to put it that way. I really appreciate what you do, and I appreciate your public service. And I was thinking, man, after a long day's work and then come to do this, I couldn't do it. So I thank you. Um, as far as... Um, the charter public schools, it is my hope that you support this resolution. Um, I have a grandson that attends Fortis Academy and I'm very impressed with the work of that school. And we all want to reduce cost uh, to provide a service and therefore a reduction in the rent would really benefit the school. So I do hope you support this resolution, resolution uh, for the education that they provide to our children. That's all I've got to say. Thank you. Okay, um, that's all the people who wish to speak. Then I will, um, close the hearing. The public hearing is hereby closed. All right, moving on. Um, we have appointments, but, but we don't have any appointments for tonight. Um, and then item eight, the consent agenda. So I'd be looking for someone to move the consent agenda. I'll move. Any support? Support. Thanks. Um, so the first item is approval. Well, wait, I think actually I mean to um, ask if anyone would like to pull any of the items for separate consideration. I can go through and I'll, I'll list each thing. Approval of minutes of the previous meeting. Communications. Report of the standing committees of um, ways and means of working session. Report of the Special Committee, Board of Public Works, Environmental Council, Community Health, 
Sorry, I think I'm not supposed to be doing this for this piece. I'm just really tired. So I think on the consent agenda, we normally just vote on the whole thing unless somebody wants to pull something for specific consideration. That's exactly right, Chair. <laughs> but you were doing a good job, so I was going to let you go through it. <laughs> All right. So, um, Robert, could you please call the roll? Or, or unless somebody wants to pull something for specific consideration. Commissioner Hodge? Well, there's a resolution that I want to pull for separate consideration, but we're not there yet, so. We're not there yet. This is uh, only the consent uh, agenda. I'm just getting my hand ready, just uh, okay. crazy. <laughs> okay, it's, it's I, I'm sorry, I didn't eat dinner until about 9.30 or whatever, and I'm a little off. Anyway, uh, Commissioner Sanders? I think I'm, I'm in the same boat as, as uh, Commissioner Hodge, so. All right. All right, so we're ready to vote simply on the consent agenda at this point. Um, so Robert, could you please call the roll? Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Agenda passed. Thank you. Okay, next is, is um, number nine, resolutions. Would somebody be willing to move resolutions, please? Commissioner Scott. Thank you, Chair. Uh, we have resolutions 9-1-A, a resolution authorizing an exemption waiver for certain CMH providers for expected financial hardship. 9-1-B, a resolution approving the issuance of bonds to finance a project for Campus Partners 1 for the acquisition or improvement of four public charter school facilities within Washtenaw County. 9-1-C, a resolution ceasing the Washtenaw County state of emergency declared in response to the heavy rainfall and associated damage of June 25th, 2021. 9-1-D, a resolution declaring a Washtenaw County state of emergency in response to the high speed winds and associated damage beginning on August 11th, 2021. 9-2-A, a resolution authorizing the payment of claims commencing with the last previously approved claim and continuing through the date of August 20th, 2021. Looking for support. Support. Thank you. Okay. Item 9-1-A, a resolution authorizing an exemption waiver for certain CMH providers for expected financial hardship. Chair, I, I was hoping to just pull one item for separate consideration and is the item regarding the bonds only because I need to abstain from that one due to a conflict. Okay. Thank you. Um, Commissioner Hodge? I want to pull... Uh... 9-1-A for separate consideration. Anyone else? I'd like to pull 9-1-A and 9-1-B. Okay. Okay, that's easy enough. Okay, let's go through um, 9-1-A. A resolution authorizing an exemption waiver for certain CMH providers for expected financial hardship. Commissioner Hodge? I want to move to adjourn this to our September 15th meeting. I support. Okay, I think then we could vote on that right this second. Well, first of all, do we have discussion on that? Uh, you have limited discussion, Chair. Under Robert's rules, you can only discuss the time of the adjournment. Uh, in other words, whether that's the correct time or um, how that would affect, uh, how the timing would affect um, the merits of the of the um, of the resolution. But it um, you can't do uh, any discussion beyond that. It's just on timing. So basically, there's, there's very little discussion. Thank, thank you, Mr. Hedger. This is one of those uh, instances where I'd be whispering in your ear and no one would know that I needed your advice. There you go. <laughs> okay, I think uh, Commissioner Labar, you had your hand up. Is it still up? This is yeah. just on the adjournment. Um, Kurt, help me out here. 
uh, if we adjourn to the 15th for final passage, we should be able to comply with any commitment that begins act October 1st, correct? I believe that's correct. Okay. That is well, correct. Sir. I've asked staff about it, correct. Anyone else? Okay, um, Robert, could you please call the roll on that? Commissioner Lavar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schenck? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? I think I'm not clear what you're asking for my vote on. I'm sorry. I moved to adjourn this to our next meeting, so we would just move this till September 15th. Okay, yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Item adjourned to September 15th. Thank you. Item 9-1-B, a resolution approving the issuance of bonds to finance a project for Campus Partners 1 for the acquisition or improvement of four public charter school facilities within Washtenaw County. Discussion? Chair, uh, I just want to note that uh, on this item, I need to abstain. Um, it's a rare conflict in that the Northern Michigan, Northern Michigan University is the authorizer for one of the charters. Uh, that would be included in this South Point uh, Shores Academy. Um, I'm not saying the name of that school, right? Because I'm a little tired as well. But there is a, uh, they are an authorizer of this and I serve on the board of Northern Michigan University. So I need to abstain from voting on this item and we'll note that when the uh, vote comes up. Thank you, Commissioner Morgan. Any other discussion? I will say that I had some concerns about this. I think hearing from um, a few members of the community that they support um, this has um, swayed my, my thinking. Um, so I just wanna put that out there. All right, um, so oh, oh. we're ready. Oh, sorry, go ahead, Commissioner Hodge. I, I was just curious uh, if Commissioner Sanders had any thoughts on this since she pulled it. I just wanted to hear if she had any thoughts. I just have concerns about charter schools, even though I have experience with them, which is why I have concerns about them. So without trying to uh, shame any particular authorizer or, you know, drag anything through the mud. I'm, I'm not supportive. I, I honor the parents and grandparents that, um, you know, may have children attending, but this, this will be my first no vote. Thank you. Any other comments? Okay. Um, Robert, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Uh, I abstain. Commissioner Scott? No. <clears throat> Commissioner Schenck? No. Commissioner Sanders? No. Commissioner Hodge? No. Commissioner Beeman? No. Commissioner Jefferson? No. Commissioner Labar? No. Motion does not carry. Thank you. Item 9-1-C, a resolution ceasing the Washtenaw County State of Emergency declared in response to the heavy rainfall and associated damage of June 25th, 2021, and D, a resolution declaring a Washtenaw County state of emergency in response to the high speed winds and associated damage beginning on August 11th, 2021. We're um, kept in the bunch, but there are only two of them. So do we have any comments on either of those? Okay, seeing no discussion, 
Robert, will you please call the roll? Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Item passed. Thank you. And then lastly, we have item 9 to approval of claims, a resolution authorizing the pavement of claims commencing with the last previously approved claim and continuing through the date of August 20, 2021. Any discussion? Okay, seeing no discussion, Robert, could you please call the roll? Commissioner Scott? Yes. Commissioner Schink? Yes. Commissioner Sanders? Yes. Commissioner Hodge? Yes. Commissioner Beeman? Yes. Commissioner Jefferson? Yes. Commissioner Labar? Yes. Commissioner Machieski? Yes. Commissioner Morgan? Yes. Item passed. Thank you. Item 10, report from the county administrator. No report. Thank you. Item 11, report of the chair of the board of commissioners. No report. Item 12, items for future or current discussion. Does anybody have any items? Okay. Um, and then finally, uh, 13, adjourn to the next session. So moved. Support. Support. All those in favor? Yeah. Uh -oh. This is the longest meeting we've had in a while. Thank you, everybody, for sticking with it. And, and thank you to everybody who's been watching for sticking with us. And um, I hope everyone has a great night. You can go Good to night. Bed. Yay. You do the same. Thank you. Bye, Bye everyone. <laughs>